Hi, Capping TV. We are here for the Cruiserweight title match between uh, high calibers Gerald Graham and 187 Inks Kevin Phillips. I'm uh, going to start with Gerald. Gerald, you've been the champ now for a couple months. Um, how you how you enjoying the series? How you feel? What's your thoughts on today? How's it going to go? I'm having a real good time. I like to travel. I like to, to bowl to different people. And uh, I don't know. I never bowled here before, so I see it being over in five. Being over in five, okay. Um, Kevin, this is your your, your team's first um, shot at the cruiserweight gold. Um, you've got the welterweight already wrapped up for 187. Um, tell me uh, how you feel this is going to go today and, and anything else you want to share with me. I think we're going to have a pretty good match today. Uh, I'm feeling really good right now. Should be a good match. So, yeah. yeah. Gerald said he's never bowled here before. Have you bowled Unholies here before? I have bowled here before. I've bowled Unholy here before. Uh, not one of my better houses, but then I will see how it goes today. Cool. Awesome. All right. Good luck, Kevin. Good luck, Gerald. And uh, put on the show for us. Thank you. This is Gordon Pepper, and no, you're not hearing things. Yes, I'm the Northeast guy, but I'm here in the Southeast, and I'm here in beautiful Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, with a guy that usually is in charge of the Southeast, and he will be today, and I'm honored to be with him, Mr. Ray Gillespie. Hey, Ray, how you doing today? I'm good, Gordon. How you doing today? I am doing fantastic. First of all, great job with everything that you're doing in the World Championship Series in the Southeast section. Oh, I appreciate that, man. We're working, working hard down here, um, doing new things, and uh, yeah, we're just, we're really excited to get these guys going. We've got a lot of new uh, new faces uh, that we'll get to see in our matches here in uh, October, and so we're we're really looking forward to. Uh, watching these guys put on a show for us. Yeah, well, we're gonna be seeing some new things later on today. Uh, we've got a Vixen's Tag Team match, which I think is gonna be amazing. We're gonna have a heavyweight matchup, which is gonna be fantastic. However, we're gonna start our morning of coverage with the Cruiserweight Championship. Your winner, or not winner yet, he wants to be the winner because he's currently had the belt, and he wants to keep it from high caliber, Mr. William Graham. He is being challenged by Kevin Phillips over at 1E7 Inc. And we are starting off. Hi, Galbert. That is your champion, Kevin Williams. And he's going to start off, I want to say, with a seven count. I haven't seen anything up there on the screen yet. So maybe they're not ready yet? Uh, he might have took a little too long to hit that start button there. They'll get it, they'll get it corrected, I believe, right here. It's, it's an early Saturday morning. And right now, maybe it's the displays that need some more coffee. Speaking of which, I've lost a bunch of weight, and while uh, Ray is going to be going down there and chatting with everybody, I'm going to be doing a little commentary. I have lost some weight, and if I keep eating the breakfast stew down here, I'm going to be getting it back on the breakfast here. Nothing short of spectacular. If you've ever been to the Myrtle Beach area, you absolutely know how well you are fed down here. So I've got a nice little lake platter, which is now gone. Hash browns gone, bacon gone. And of course, down here, sweet tea is an option up the Northeast. In, in the Southeast, it's mandatory. Yeah, sweet tea you have you have to have. Um, if I, I've learned, I, I forget that every year when I go to Battle Wall and go up north that I got to bring my own sugar because <laughs> you have you get iced tea, you don't get sweet tea. They look at you funny, you know, like you're a, a complete foreigner. I'm like we're from this, we're in the same country, but yeah, the North South are completely different. Uh, Myrtle Beach weather is completely different right now. Uh, rained a lot yesterday. Uh, so yeah, I was I was driving in the middle of it. I felt it. Yeah, so we weren't in that six, we're we're in that 60 degree zone right now. Um, but it's good because hotel rooms are a lot cheaper. Yes, and, they and are. Everything right now being off season. But this bowling center is phenomenal. It's been phenomenal to the UBA for a number of years. Um, it even hosts uh, some PWBA events. I guess it's a it's a great bowling center for bowling, and we're look, looking forward to a great weekend here. Yeah, Cal Phil Kevin Phillips starts off his side of the match with a strike. Now, I hear clapping, and I see gold pom-poms over there to my right. Please explain that one to me. Yeah, so um, high caliber uh, Gerald's uh, wife and kids are here, and uh, his daughter's name, I can't think of, but I've seen a couple pictures of her online um, after their team has done really well. She's kind of like... Oh, he gets 
Caleb's comes down with a sloppy double. Very nice, Kevin. It doesn't matter. It's two strikes. That's that's all Kevin's gonna care about. Um, but no, with uh, back to Gerald's family. Um, his his daughters always. Anytime they win, their, their team will always post a video of her doing like a, like a cheer or something. And, and so it's it's like a nice nice family that's feel. Great. That um that Casey Pike. That's one of that's her team. Uh -huh. And one of the things that she's uh, she's done for them down there is a good family atmosphere. Yeah, K Casey Pike, a very well-known, long-running Vixens champion, and I personally think it's only going to be a matter of time till we see her on Caffeine TV. Whether she's wielding the belt or not at that point, I definitely think that we should be getting her in a match. Yeah, I mean we've got we've got a lot of good ideas um, that you know we're, we're bringing to the, the the powers that be, so to speak. Um, Trying to get a special uh, event even for Mega Bowl this year, uh, WCS Invitational to anybody that's ever been um, ever been a champ. That it's one big event. Um, we got it's a lot in the works still, but we're trying to have more of those uh, exhibition kind of mm -hmm. matches and and things like that because it's people love to watch bowling. They love to pick sides. They love game sevens. Um, they just love the competitive fire that a lot of these folks will bring to us. Nothing more fun than a game seven. I've said that a number of times. And strikes, sloppy strikes are cheap on lane three today. Hey, that's good though. I mean, it, it's good for these guys. Cause like, we, like I said when I was interviewing them, uh, Kevin has bowled here at Unholy before. Uh, this is Gerald's first time bowling here. So um, there's nerves that set in. Um, I had some of my teammates that this was their first Unholy and Mm -hmm. You know, they, they only marked once in the first five frames, you know, in the actual event. Uh, but, yeah, these guys just get their nerves out of the way. You can see Kevin's kind of situated more. And then he does that on me. <laughs> right, on, right on cue there. But. Right, right, right on cue. The, the broadcaster's taste of the kiss of death. That, that talent, very well known. Everybody knows that I'm the master of that. I'm, uh, you're starting to get that. Well, that little yeah, taste I, up I there. felt that a little bit yesterday. I was trying to get some uh, missed five pins uh, on camera. Uh-oh. And uh, I was 0 for 8 yesterday. Everybody everybody picked them up. So, except the one I didn't record uh, that happened because it was uh, one of the, the ladies with a 230 average that you never would have expected her to miss a five pin. And <laughs> well, maybe that will change today. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe we'll see a five pin from one of the cruiserweights. Right now, it's Kevin Phillips' turn to leave a five pin. He is currently up by nine pins going into the fourth frame. If you just tuned in, welcome to game one of our best of seven cruiserweight match. As always, at any best of seven, whoever wins four games first wins the match. And in this match, the Southeast Cruiserweight title is at stake. Kevin Phillips right now, fourth frame, trying to hold on to his lead, and he will lose uh, with a strike, and there it is. Right now, neither bowler hitting the hitting the ball dead flush, but they don't have to at this point. Yeah. Light hits right now are working. Kevin Phelps right here. Oh, so let me ask you a quick question. Are you trying to get the light hit over here or are you trying to bury it and the ball just happens to be going into the light side? Uh, I'm just rolling the ball, trying to get it close to the pocket right now. Hopefully the ball will work and get the pins to move around a little bit. So. So that, that was the first, I should say, pocket or deep pocket hit that I've seen all match right there from the champion. He now has a one pin lead. Yeah. So talk to and me it, a little bit about Styles because you, you've seen these bowlers obviously down to the southeast. So is this, are they, do they bowl similar or is this a little bit of a comp, contrast to Styles? No, I, you know, the, the, these guys aren't, they don't, they're not flashy. They're not, um, this is just, they, they're, they're very similar. They're, they're, I don't want to say, I don't want to say boring because it's not boring. Um, but it's just a matter of like, they're going to both stay on the right side of the lane. They're not going to swing it. They're not really playing it straight really, but it's not hooking, I guess would be the, um, the thing with the, what their style is going to be, because I've, I've bowled 10 games here already this weekend, mm -hmm. that once the, once the lanes start to break down, how they adjust to the transition is going to be what's going to be key uh, for both of these guys, both Gerald and for Kevin. So, now, is it, we'll now the way that you're saying it, they're not swinging it out. Is this a down and in center, this like second, third arrow center? Or is this something where you can swing the ball and get away with it? 
No, I mean, it's kind of straighter is greater here mm -hmm. um, in a way, unless you're really good at swinging a lane. Um, I was going um, 30 to 10 yesterday. And it's kind of, so I was, I was going out the second arrow, but there were a lot of people that were just staying right of, uh, you know, r really far right of that. And we're kind of going 20 to 10. See, and of course, the you second go. that you say that, there's Graham swinging all the way out and then and then throwing the ball back in. Yeah, now, Graham's got his own supporters support group over here. Yeah, he's got a couple teammates in the building. Um, he's got his family here, so that's that's the cool part. Um, Kevin's got uh, at least one of his teammates here. So, but high caliber is a team is they they rely on energy. <laughs> Um, and so it, it'll be interesting to see how he is in this match. If, if he keeps striking and the energy goes up, he could win this 4-0. But if he starts missing stuff or gets behind, will they match the energy needed for him to keep going? That's where it's going to come into come into play the most. Absolutely. Phelps right now, the score count says eight. I see nine. I only see a lone tempin up there. It's on a strike. It doesn't really matter yet unless he misses this. And then we'll figure it out from that point. Phelps looked like he had the line early. He's leaving flag tens right now over on on, uh, on lane four, and Champion's taking advantage of it as of right now. So Phelps is going to fall a little bit off the pace here. He's down by 11, assuming that he makes this, and he will. Yep. Yeah, I think so. Now he's down nine, going into the second half of game one. Yeah, that ten pin was uh, wobbling so much that it, it the sensors were picking up as being two pins probably there. So, but yeah, it's on a strike. You know, for you know everybody in the bowling community knows if it's on a strike, it's the combination of the next two shots. Uh, so that it really doesn't matter. If it had been on a spare, we would have definitely had to get a cor score correction there. Right. But um, everything, the score is correct. It, it, it could have threw a gutter spare, one spare, nine spare, whatever, eight spare, all scoring the same. If so. he threw a gutter spare, trust me, he'd be hearing it. That and is, he's hearing a lot of temp pens right now. Yeah. Yeah, so he, he's going to need to figure out a way to change his ball motion really early mm -hmm. um, because that's, both of his shots look exactly the same. So hopefully he, he works this out quick. But the, the, the best part about WCS matches is total pinfall is completely irrelevant. Right. You know, it's all about winning the matches. You can win four matches by one pin. Or, uh, yeah, four, yeah, four, four matches games, by one, you're right. Yeah, four yeah. games by one pin, and you're going to win the match. It don't matter if you lost the other three by a combination of 140. Yeah. Uh oh it's, ooh, no, Kevin, you can't do that. I uh, can't, can't do that now, and definitely can't do that when your opponent is on a three-bagger. Yeah. Graham looking to take control of game one. And in the words of Yogi Bear, it's getting early late for Mr. Phillips in this game, especially if Graham can make this a five-bagger going down the lane. Now, we saw on lane three, he scored that ball out there. Let's see if he does it again over on lane four. That may be the correct adjustment to make here. Here we go. That ball does come out. It's coming back in. Oh, nine pin. Yeah, so when I when I was throwing a similar line today yesterday, I left more nine pins than ten pins yesterday. So he just, he just got a spare. He's got an early lead here this game. So he just needs to not overthink it too much, make the right correction. Um, and just more importantly, make this spare. The, the lead you got, don't give it away. Yeah, you know, you don't want to automatically yeah, think you're going to have it. He makes it nicely. You know, you're gonna, he's going to have to reset lane three. There is a pin that's down there. The button will work. Yeah. Get more commentary talking time here. Yeah. So it looks like right now your champion definitely looks like he's got the better lane. It definitely looks like he can make more spares than Kevin Phillips, Kevin Phillips does because Phillips just deflected the ten pin. Yeah, Kevin's got to he's got to figure that out because he looked really good the first two frames. He did. I mean, he started with the lead. He had the double. Yeah, and it just kind of you know I don't know if he got comfortable. I don't know what he did there, but he got distracted by the big yellow pom-poms. So no, I'm not making a lewd joke. There is really big yellow pom-poms there. Yeah, they are, um, you know, they're there. They're not, they're not shaking at the moment, but they could be a distraction for sure. Oh, I was about to say they could be shaking if there's a strike, but there is another 10 pin. Now, let's see how well he makes the 10 pin, because I think this is, actually, no, it's a second shot at it. But we already saw what Kevin Phillips did with his second attempt at the 10 pin, and not good. 
Yeah, let's see. He, he needs a. He got lucky that he only left the 10. That Honestly, is true. Going, going that, Brooklyn the way he did. Yeah, you're absolutely right. There probably should have been a seven or four to go along with it. Yeah, that could, so, or he could have left the five pin. I saw a number of those leaves like that yesterday where people would cross over mm -hmm. and catch that one pin too light and leave the five. All right, Kevin Phillips up right now. He's in a little bit of a hole. He's down 21 pins going into his side of the seventh. Obviously, a strike and a double here, he can cut it down to one. If my math is correct, the best that Phillips can do is a 236. If he strikes here and he will, that's a much better shot. Uh, now we got some shouting here in the back. Yeah, there we go. That's what I like to hear. Like, got a little 187 ink action. I don't know who the guy is, but he's got a 187 ink jersey on, and he's the one giving advice. Do you have any idea who that guy is? I do not. I'll bring him over eventually. I, I do not. Yeah, we, we'll get him over here. Let's see. Let's see if we can. If, All right, uh, Phelps can go off for a 236. Uh, yeah. um, Graham can go off for a, two, for a 247. So right now, difference is 11 pins. I think a double here will put. Yeah, he's going to need a double here. here. Yeah. Ab you're absolutely right, and that's ooh. not. Ooh. He okay. got away with a lot right there. He yeah. almost left a lot of pins. Yeah, he just got to just got to stay focused, you know, and he's got to kind of decide at some point in each of these early games when he needs to start working on a ball change, things like that. Get ready for the next game. What he what he has to do better. Don't get so lost in the current game once it gets out of reach. So it's going to depend on what um, Gerald does when he gets up. Yeah, he's going to find out if Gerald gives him a chance momentarily. Yeah. Now, you've been in these positions. Is maybe the problem that he had at the beginning of this game a little bit over-adjusting? Like, you have the two frames, then you leave something in the third that you don't necessarily like, even though you had the line, or at least you had the line early, and then maybe you do a little bit of over-adjustment. Maybe it was just a bad shot. Maybe you didn't really have to adjust. Well, and that's what separates the, the uh, league bowler from a tournament bowler. Uh, kind of a thing like you have to get better at understanding what you just did wrong. Did you roll your hand over? Did you completely miss your spot? Was your ball speed bad? Just because you didn't get the pinfall you wanted doesn't mean you need a ball change. Right. You just have to eliminate all the things that that you did correctly or, or that you did that could have done incorrectly and figure it out that way. Just because you, you could go four in a row and leave a 10 pin. That don't mean you need a ball change. That's true. Big it, nine frame coming up. If he doubles, he's in great shape. If he opens, Phillips can steal this game. This shot's big, and oh my goodness. Oh, oh. all right. Well, so it, I, I almost was the kiss of death there saying, if he opens, yeah. Phillips could come in and steal this one. The 10 pin almost complied. In this case, it's only a solid two pin. Obviously, he still has to make this. Yeah, but I, I the, thought for sure that 10 pin was going to stand up with that one. Oh, me too. Now, obviously, we're assuming he makes this, even if he does make this, and he will. Yep. Phelps can put a lot of pressure on Graham if he goes out the door. It forces Phelps to double. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of feel bad for Kevin in this situation because, you know, it'd be nice if he knew he was this game was locked up that he could go ahead and, and maybe look at getting lined up for next game. <laughs> But he's still in this game, so he well, can't really do that yet. Well, he if he doesn't to, throw the ninth, if he doesn't throw a strike in the ninth frame, then he can start looking around right, in the tenth. Yeah, absolutely. Because this ball's got to be a strike. If he goes out the door, it is a 216, and he will he will force Scram to at least throw the first one and get a count, which is one of the reasons why he said he's got a double. There's a strike. Again, now think it looks like he's figured out lane four. Now he's got to figure out lane three because if he leaves a two pin up there this time, the game's over. Well, Ray is down looking at some notes. We'll go into the 10th frame. So the situation is this. Kevin Phillips pretty much needs to throw a strike here to try to continue this game. If he does not, if he does not, then the champ, William Graham, is going to take game one. First shot here, very, very important. Incredibly crucial because he needs this one to keep game one alive. Here's a shot. Ball looks a little bit high. Ten pin oh, game's over. In. And unlike the other three or four times, this time the ten pin does not fall down. No, it's it's still there. 
and, and it's kind of one of those things where if he wants to just throw another shot to see, um, there's no point really even attempting to pick this up. He might as well go ahead and figure out, throw another shot, um, another strike ball basically, and you know, get in, get out of his own head and make sure he's throwing the right ball on the right line, all that good stuff. Yeah, he's, he's may have to throw an area shot here, assuming Meeks is turning well. Yeah, I mean, game, I, the third frame, strike in the second, strike in the fourth, then all of a sudden, plaque 10, plaque 10, plaque 10. So, and one of those non, one of those non strikes was a two pin over on lane three, and that could have been a gigantic mess. In this case, the important thing was it wasn't a strike. The open in the sixth frame definitely did not help. No, and, and that's going to kind of be the difference here is in these matches like that, you can't open. Like, you know, it, it, it's sort of like, single a, it's you sort of like a turnover in football. Sometimes you can get away with it, usually you can't. And yeah. that is not going to work. Yeah, so it definitely wasn't a good finish. No. Um, it's one thing to lose the game and, like, finish good so where you feel good about the next game, but, you know, it, Gerald's already going to have an advantage in game two. Um, coming off the 1-0 lead and being able to know that his, his, his opponent is struggling at the moment, at right now. All right, I'm, I'm interested in that nickname of Gerald, but meanwhile, William Graham, now, and I'll explain something in the South after this game. Graham's coming up the oof. Well, it's a good thing he didn't need anything in the 10th frame now, isn't it? No, no. Well, actually, technically, he does need something in the 10th frame because he's still down. He needs to get two. No, you know, we're automatically assuming that no, this game was over. It is, it's 199. He, he oh, I'm sorry, no, you're right. You're, oh, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, he can throw okay, it through so the middle and not, and not Yeah, our, our math was correct. The difference, and now I'm, I'm noting this right now, the difference doesn't show up in the graphic until after the frame is completed. Yeah, the, so this, if you this, notice, this, he's down one on the graphic, even though now he's up five. That is right. good to know here. Yeah, the scoring, you got you to gotta go all, look it all the way through. Yeah, you got to look at the score and not the difference. So at the end of game one, the champion, 199, challenger, 194, William or Joe Graham up one zip. Yeah, we, yeah. So meanwhile, we're all going to be going, doing some fixing here. So this is, as we said, best of seven. So our cameraman Tony Evans is getting some of the action here. The challenger, Kevin Phillips, is going to start game two. I'm going to quickly ask him, what changes do you need to make on game two? Pardon? What changes do you need to make on game two? Because you're driving the ball in there, you're just not getting the carry yet. Uh, it's just small adjustments with my release, because I'm kind of battling my release right now. Plus, the head pin on three is the offset just a hair. I think that's what cost me on that last. I had a chance, but just keep working at it. There you go. Kevin Phelps right now. Uh, that, three, that hip may be off a little bit, but he's absolutely right. He's got to make some adjustments. But he did say this, that he thought the adjustments only needed to be slight. I happen to agree with him on that. Maybe a little bit of a different angle of entry. We'll see if he does make that adjustment. We're going into game two. Now I'm going to wait for Ray to be, get, be settled. Here he is. Back. So I got a question for you because yes, you called him Gerald. And on the sheet, I've got William. Now, I know the Southeast is full, and I mean full of nicknames of what we call the bowlers that are coming down here in the in the UBA. So is that a nickname? Is that a real name? Is William the real name? What do we got? Um, I think William's the real name. William's the okay. given name. Mm -hmm. um, Gerald is just his, uh, his nickname. You know, just like, you know, mine is Ray. That's, that's my real name. That's just my middle right. name. So I think uh -huh. we were talking about her earlier, yep. and I love her to come. Yeah, I love her to come over around, over around later on. Yep. So that is Casey. Last time I chatted with her it was Casey Turner. Now it's Casey Pike. We'll be chatting about that momentarily. A very long-running Vixens champion. Yep. But I really want to get her opinions on this match. Kevin but, Phillips, meanwhile, said that he wanted to make a couple adjustments. I will guarantee you, based on that first shot leave, that was not one of the adjustments that he was planning on making. Well, it was an adjustment. It just wasn't a good one. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right, so he goes out to 6-2. That is not, if you just lost the first game, that's not a good way to start game two. No. And, and that's kind of where, like, if, if, if you knew earlier in game one that that was going to be the outcome, he could have changed balls. He could have worked on some different things. Because now it's it's you starting six two, 
But the good part is, Gerald's up now on four. Last time he was up, he left the big four. So, you know, Gerald has to figure out what he's doing too. So, it's not the best start in the world yet. You know, it, like it could have been because his last ball on that pair was was not good. Well, so, I'm gonna assume that that was just an area check because he knew that he had the game on hand. And ooh, I was about to say straight up strike wrong, that bad. Yep. So, but at least it's not a big four, and no. it is a makeable spare. Yep. Now, I'm going to say Gerald from now on, because I've said William at the beginning of the match, and I'm going to confuse yep. everybody if I keep using William, going, wait a second, Gordon's saying William, what are you saying, Gerald? Do they, do they not know what exactly the name is? And the answer is yes. Southeast does have nicknames. I'm going to say Gerald from now on, and Gerald's got the spare. There you go. Good spare there, sir. Then there are a lot of bowlers in the Southeast a that lot. use nicknames. Dre Gaither, a yep. long-running heavyweight champion and yep. world champion. No that flash. is not his real yep. name. Nope. Uh, I've got Josh Pittman. I believe that is his real name. Yep. He's hanging out right next to us, also a long-running Southeast heavyweight champion. Yep. Yeah, I mean, him and, him and Dre are a, a very good uncapped tag team together, too. You know, talking yeah. about the both of them. Yeah, I, uh, I want to see them coming up. And they, we would have seen them today if they won their match last month. Yeah, they, they just came up short. I believe they, I believe they lost in game seven, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I think it went game seven at uh, Woodley Flames. This is a great bowling center for us as well. Gerald, they right there with the strike. So Graham, by the way, because I've used that a lot, that is his last name. Yes. People may be thinking that is his first name. It is not. No, I believe, so now people that just turned, tuned in, this is game two, and we're using three different names for a bull in game one. Yeah, I mean, it, it's <laughs> fine. And we might come up with some more by the time, you know. We could, we could. Right now, the nickname I may be giving Kevin Phillips is Flat 10. So the stream for uh, Kevin's uh, number one contender match to get here um, they kind of gave him a, a, a new nickname. Uh, okay. That old, that old guy. <laughs> That's what they kept calling him. Was that old guy? So we don't, we don't have a lot of, um, we don't have a lot of uh, seniors in, in right. some of these series. Uh, but Kevin is, is one, and uh, he's also in the tag, uh, tag series as well. So now, are they close to getting to a title shot or not yet? They got some ways to go. Um, no, they, they still got a couple matches to go. Um, his team is a lot of newer bowlers, uh, a lot of lower average bowlers. In fact, uh, later today even, the welterweight title match is between two of his guys. Two 1870 mm -hmm. are going at it for the welterweight title. Um, and the two bowling in the, in the number one contender match this month are both on 1870 too. So his team is dominating the welterweight series right now with the top four spots. Well, that's great on the handicap pairs for a tour stop. So now they just got to get a couple of scratch bowlers in there for their scratch trios. Yeah, and because they're in the um, they're in the district with the uh, UBA champs, uh, G Town heavy hitters. So there, there's some teams you got. Uh, obviously, Jack and Matt on mm -hmm. G Town are big in the WCS. Um, Nick right, Christie and G Town has yep. has a long storied reputation, a long history in the World Championship yes. Series. A number of title bowlers coming from there. And Lee Bolin, who's actually held one of the Zen titles. Yes. During yep. Battle Bowl, you know, I asked him about the experience of the WCS, and he said that was one of the factors of them winning the titles because they're used to high pressure situations now because of the WCS. Gerald didn't mm. like that shot, and he almost paid for it. Six, nine, ten. Yeah, that seven almost stayed up. That would have, have been really tough to pick up there. But that, so talking about Lee Bolin, we're actually going to get to see his wife, Tracy Bowl, yeah. um, in the Vixen Stag match later today. So. Oh, that's going to be fun. Tracy Bullen, again, she's got gold. Uh, won the Wilder Cup last year at Battle Bowl, so it's going to be fun to see somebody uh, representing uh, the def defending the UBA World Champions. So that is going to be a fun match to see later on today. Meanwhile, fourth frame, Graham, or Gerald, or William, or whatever we want to call him right now, up by 12 pins going into the fourth frame. That can be cut down to two if Kevin Phillips throws a double. First things first, Gerald trying to at least maintain the lead, if not extend it. Going to the fourth frame, here's that first shot. He likes lane three. Ooh, he doesn't like that shot. That, that three, four, six, seven, ten. Yipes. That was not good. 
We're actually Ducky, come back here. We're actually being joined down here. We've got a number of people from the northeast that are coming down here, and we are joined by Ducky Vision. One Ducky Russell. Hello, Duck. Hello. How you doing, guys? Doing okay. How's it going by you? Uh, I mean, I'm bowing okay. like uh, I left like arm. whackers. Yeah. Yeah. Like I left my arm back at home, but here we are. Oh, good run. Lady. So, Duck, run. let's chat very, very quickly while we're watching this match. This is a cruiserweight title match. You've got a title match in a week. Yes, next Saturday, 10 a.m., 10.30-ish, Laurel Lanes. You're bowling the Dark Dingle. Yeah, Dingle Era ends. Dingle Ooh. Era ends. But right now, the Graham Andy Huey needs a diaper change, and I'm the one that's going <laughs> to change it. <laughs> uh, Ducky Russell looking for his another reign at the title. All right, thank you. I wish Ducky the best of luck. We may be covering that later. We may not. We'll find out. Right now, Kevin Phelps looking to take the lead in game two, and he will. Oh, OK, OK. There we go. The 10 pin finally goes down for yeah. him over on lane four. And right now, Kevin Phillips, for the, actually, I shouldn't say the first time in this match, but the first time in this game, will take the lead. Yeah. So a, that, that's exactly change. the spark that he needed. And you're absolutely right. I hear you saying good ball change. Tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, I mean, he, he finally, it took him a little bit longer. He had that, that orange bow ball there. That just, he didn't need to, he stayed in it, I think, too long. And I'm not sure what he's actually got in his hand now. I just noticed it was different because uh, the ball motion was completely different and the outcome obviously was different as well. Absolutely, this to increase the lead to at least 16, maybe 26 pins, he go. does. There's the adjustment that he was talking about at the yeah. end of game one. This is his first three bagger in the match and this is gonna get him at least 26 pin lead. Now he's got, now he's chatting around with one of his teammates. I'm gonna try to find out more information on that when he comes back over here. Meanwhile, Gerald, with his first really awful shot of this match, coming in the fourth frame. He's got to pick up here in the fifth frame, and he will mm, not tip it. in again. So it's almost sort of like he's running into the issues that Kevin Phillips did in game one. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to need to, he, he might need to look at the ball change as well. Uh, right now he has, well, it still good. looks like the ball that he started the game with, correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah he, uh, um, Gerald's still in the same ball he started with. The the whole thing with him is like he's relatively new to UVA, so he, he's not like a lot of our folks in WCS that we've seen plenty of. You got game tape mm -hmm. of him, so to speak. You know, there's not a lot of film out there on Gerald. He's relatively a new guy. Um, he's in the Deep South District, so. Uh, Great guy, conversation with me. He's been seems like a great guy, a great team. Like we talked about Casey already. I'll be in the owner, only uh, surround herself with good people. Yeah, right now he's looking for good people to help him out with the strike here. Oh, a ten almost got the 10. Now, just like he had the opportunity to put Kevin Phillips away in game one, which he successfully did, it is now Kevin Phillips' turn to have the opportunity to put Gerald Williams away in game two. And a couple more strikes will do that, especially if Gerald cannot find where to throw the strike. And yeah. he almost mm. didn't find where to throw the spare. Yeah, he, he almost he almost pulled a Kevin on the 10 pin. <laughs> That's what we're calling him now? Yeah, he pulled, pulled a Kevin. Pulled a Kevin. Pulled a Kevin. Little Yanker? Yeah. All right, however, the aforementioned Kevin Phillips already up by at least 36 going into the second half of game two. If he wins this one, he ties it up Gerald Williams, if you just joined us, Ger uh, Gerald Williams already took game one. He was looking to take game two. However, he's now down in a 30 plus pin hole, which could be a lot more than that, depending on what Kevin does. Kevin Williams up right now, looking to extend his lead. More importantly, looking to extend his strike streak to four in a row. If he does, he'll pad it. Two more strikes here, and that could almost effectively take care of game two. Now, I'm yeah. sure people are saying, well, there's a lot of time left. No, there isn't. Four frames left. Here's that shot. Looks a little light. Mm. Oh, sorry, a little now, light. A little light there, but it's all good. Seven pin, he should be able to get that. Yeah, um, well, he's been feeding on that light hit for the past couple of frames, has he not? Yeah, yeah but that one just felt like a little lighter than they had been. Like, yeah. it, it just, it, it, it didn't hit with that same energy. It just kind of hit. You know, it just wasn't very rewarding for him. Yeah, so he will leave at the seven pin. Assuming that he makes it, difference will be 26 pins. Strike here would have been 36 plus. 
And he'll make this corner pin. Yeah, no problem yeah. there. So Kevin Phillips up by 26, four frames left to go. As I said, he could have put Gerald Williams away. He did not. Gerald Williams has got some life left. Four frames left to go. Doing the math here, the best that Phillips can do is a 247. The best that Joe Williams can do, 221. So Gerald's gonna have to start striking and he's gonna need a little bit of help from Kevin Phillips or a combination of both. Yeah, I, I think one thing with um, with high caliber as a team is they've got they've got plenty of people here that will talk him through his ball adjustments. Oh, that it's, was nice. Yeah, that was very good there. Uh, That's I a good try here. Now, now I'm very curious to know who that guy is over here as I'm queuing him over. Hi. I'm doing all right. I, it seems that you're part of the Kevin Phillips fan club right now. Yes, I am. Uh, Kevin is actually the president of the team. I'm the vice president. Aha. Uh -huh. What is your name, vice president? My name is Shane Carrollock. Shane, first of all, pleasure to meet you. Second of all, I see that you're chatting with Kevin during the match. What advice have you been giving him? Uh, basically, just telling him to slow down, trust the ball, keep his hand behind the ball, and just trust it. I mean, that Kevin's got such a strong mental game. Ooh. He's got this, so he can come down come back from two, three down and do this. So I've got faith in him. Right now he doesn't have to come back from anything down. He looks like, again, depending on what Gerald does here, and it looks like as of right now, Gerald's in the middle of trying to refigure out what to do because game one he was looking really good, game two not so much. So it looks like Kevin may be evening this one up one game apiece. That's what we're hoping for. So we'll keep, keep it going with Kevin and see how this match turns out. All right, I'll let you chat with Kevin a little bit more. Thank you so yeah. much for joining us. Thanks, Shane. Appreciate it. So that was from Shane, the vice president of 187 Inc. And right now, he's got to be happy with what he sees. At this moment, we have a little bit of a timeout here. Gerald is looking. Ah, now we have a ball change. Gerald's yeah, I wouldn't be going surprised into the back of tricks here looking for a new shot. Joe goes out the door to 197. That does mean that Kevin's got to throw, start throwing some stuff here unless, oh my goodness, are you kidding me? My God. That was an ugly, 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 ugly strike. Yeah. What, what do you consider that in the Southeast? In the Northeast, that's an ugly Brooklyn. What is that in the Southeast? Terrible. Okay. That's just terrible. We just, you know, or, or we just say it looks the same up there. You know, it's a, it, it looks fantastic up there. Yeah. In the words of in the words of Charles Barkley, terrible. Terrible. Yep. Or or vomit inducing. Yeah. If I was Kevin Phillips, that's vomit inducing. However, fortunately for Kevin Phillips, he's up by around 40 pins. Strike here makes it 50. He's up 50 go. pins. That sounds like a Shane in the background. There we go. Yeah, Shane's in the Shane is also in the WCS series. Um, he's I know he's in the tag series. He might be in one of the single series as well. Well, Kevin right now is up by 50, going into the ninth frame. Yeah. Obviously, a strike puts it away. Any sort of mark puts it away. If he leaves a hideous mess like he did in the first frame, then all of a sudden, game yeah. two is up for grabs. He's trying to make sure it is not up for grabs. No, I mean it would take a, a colossal collapse. On, on that old guy, on that old dude, to uh, to make this well, uh, here's a, a shot right game. here. Joe would like no, to see a collapse. That That's one. not it. That's gonna be game no, right there. Yeah, game. So we're, we're gonna go one one. We're gonna be tied. One game apiece. Yep. So let's chat with Kevin because he's right over here. You said you needed to make a quick change. Boy, did you? Much better look on game two. Oh, yeah. Made a ball change. Gives me a little extra snap on the back end. Helps the carry. So that's what I needed to do. So we had a ch chat with Shane over there, and he said that he told you to slow the bleep down in terms of your shot. <laughs> I'm not going to say what the bleep is because, again, we are on Caffeine TV, and I don't want to say anything not suitable for television. So um, how often do you listen to him? Like, do you see him usually in every match, or is he just here on this special occasion? This is one of the first matches I've seen him at with me. Uh, but most of the people that come with me, I do listen because they know my game. Just like I know his game, we just kind of communicate with each other. Um, so if he says slow down, that's what we do. But yeah, right now this game's mathematically over. You're gonna tie this up one apiece, um, unless the pins are all of a sudden worth more value in the 10th frame on a felt, which technically they're not. Right. So, are you going to be throwing an area shot? What is your mindset now in this frame? My mindset right now is just make sure I get uh, down the lane, 
hand behind the ball, let the ball do the work. Face, that's just about it. All right, I'll let you get back in your game. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah. So both Ray and I both like game sevens, and it was looking yes. that way early. However, mm -hmm. no. now a best of five instead of a best of seven. Yeah. And, and the good part is, is you know, obviously Shane and Kevin having good conversations on what needs to be done. Sometimes you just need a, a, a set of ears to for somebody just to listen to what you're seeing, to disagree what you disagree. Like you just need that sometimes. So Kevin actually got that in that game. Um, Gerald, he's got, uh, you know, he's got his wife, he's got his kids here. Uh, more importantly, he's got Casey here uh, on the, the lane reading part that, you know, Casey, Vixen's champ for forever. Um, you know, she was had a run in the Vixen's tag series for a little bit. Like, she's she's solid, and she can help you get in the right ball really quick. Oh, it's and, only going to be a matter of time until we see Casey again. Yeah. And those crazy PSAs, which, which I love, by the way. Oh yeah, that, she she was the spark that um, we needed in the southeast, and um, you know it's been very awesome for people to see and enjoy just how much um, a woman can talk trash in a non-offensive way, so to speak. So it's been pretty uh, pretty cool here. Yeah, no, it's it's going to be a lot of fun, and Casey talking junk is always a lot of fun. And it's funny because you have, well, that's a throwaway. You have both of them talking junk, and we'll get to that in game three. But at the end of game two, actually, we're not done yet. I'm sorry. Yeah. I was a little bit premature there. Oh, it, I mean, for, I mean, all he's got to do is throw, drop a ball, throw a ball, oh, kick a ball, overhand a ball. <laughs> really doesn't matter how he does it. This game is over. I'll be impressed if he overhands the ball. I don't think I don't think Myrtle Beach Bowl will be too thrilled about it. But no, I would be impressed no. if he overthrew the ball right now. Yeah. Now he will not. He'll be a simple no. gentleman and he'll make the spare. No. So at the end of game two, Kevin Phillips, 236. Gerald Williams, 174. And we are tied. One game apiece. Yep. That's good. And, and, and that's, like I said, I always, I love these matches for, you know, I don't pick sides. I don't do any of that kind of stuff. To me, it's more about, like, I like the competitive nature of it. Like, sweeps have their moments, you know, but any, any sports uh, fan, you know, unless your team is involved, you should love game sevens. Yes. You know, you should love yes. the, the comeback. So you should preach. Yeah. I mean, preach, we, brother Ray. Right? Preach. I'm, I'm telling you, there's nothing better. Preach. Than, uh, nothing better than when a team goes down 3-0 and they walk them down and win 4-3. Um, People ask me all the time, who, what am I rooting for? And I've always said the same thing that you just said, game seven. Yeah. Give me game seven. Yeah. Sure, Kevin and Gerald doesn't want game seven unless they're trailing. Then they want yeah. game seven. Yeah. Gerald right now with another sloppy strike, but hey, in the words of you, it looks good up there. Yeah, I mean, game seven, it, to me, is just, uh, I mean, hell, I've loved game seven since um, a league of their own, you know? <laughs> and it didn't it didn't work out for the Rockford Beaches the way it was supposed to, um, but it, it made that game seven so exciting. Bowling game sevens, baseball game sevens. There's no um, crying in baseball. There you go. There's a lot of crying in bowling. There's, there is a lot of crying. There a lot is of crying in bowling. It's trying to control the kicking of things. <laughs> it is the... Yes, hopefully there's no kicking. Oh, oh Kevin boy. may want to kick his ball down the lane right now and use the yeah. alligator on that one. Hey, four or six. And when I say the alligator, we have the little ball rolling things up in the northeast that look like little alligators, and then sometimes they look like little dinosaurs. Oh, yeah. And that's the little okay. thing that you stick yeah. them down the... Stick the ball on the top, and then you stick the little ball down the ramp. Well, he might need to use things. one to try to pick this up, or a six-pound ball, maybe. Maybe two at the same time. But just get one. That's the main thing to do here. He does. Yeah, it, it, is, it is early. Funny thing is this. Whoever, whoever has led the game so far has lost. Yeah. Yeah, so, so game seven would be interesting if, it, if it, that trend were to continue. Yeah. <laughs> game seven, you take the lead. No, you take the lead. No, you take it. No, you take it. I don't want it. You have it. I don't want it. You have it. So right now it is Gerald with the lead as we go in the second frame of game three. For everybody that's just joined us, you're in game three and you've missed nothing because each bowl is taking a game. Yep. So, yeah, we, yeah, you missed each bowl. Oh, taking a game and there goes there the There you champion. go, Kevin. Nope. Shane is happy about it. Casey is not happy about it since she's rooting for high caliber. Yep. 
However, she will be very happy if Jarrell throws a double and increases the lead. Yes. High caliber with a sort of semi lead at this point, depending on what they do in frame two. A strike keeps, I'm sorry, a mark keeps the lead, guys, as a strike extends it in open and he gives the lead right back. Second ball, here's that ball coming up, looking for the double. Mm. No, but in decent shape, 2 4. No, it's, I don't know. It just, it, his shot don't look the same. Um, we don't, we're kind of at the best angle there. I, 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 I think he's pushing the ball too far. <coughs> And, it, and that's why it's coming in light like that on that right lane. Um, he got away with the stuff on lane three, you know, and had and got the strike. You know, it was that it was could have been beautiful, it could have been ugly. It didn't matter. It was a strike. Spare but this nice. right here, there you go. He spared it up. Not only strike. Now he is pacing a little bit on the floor. I've seen him scuffing his foot. Now he's looking at his foot. Maybe he's got some footing issues. Yeah, but I don't think his footing issues would have caused him to throw the ball harder unless he was trying to overcompensate for it. Possibly. Uh, but we'll see how, how he reacts here. Yeah, he did, he did bury the ball here in the first frame. Let's see what he does in the third. Ray's looking to check the feet. He is struggling a little bit with the foot, but it doesn't really matter. There's another nice strike. Yeah, so the right lane, he, was th he threw the ball uh, further right on the right lane. Um, that one, it looked good from the minute he dropped the ball. It looks better. I'm going to be real interested to see back his, his uh, jersey nickname, by the way, is Q, K-Y-U, or Q. I do not know what that means. Viper, I know exactly what that means. That's the back name on Kevin Phelps' jersey. Yeah. Viper well, right now looking to recoil and maybe forget what he did over in lane four one frame or two frames earlier. So that ball looking to double up for himself. And yeah, oh, that's yeah. better. Yeah. And the thing you know, like when, when Kevin in the first frame of this game, when he left that four six, he kind of like, you know, patted his chest a little bit, like mm -hmm. acknowledging that he knew what he did wrong. And that's good to know, like that's good to do, especially when you got people helping you with adjustments, where like when you just kind of do that little, that chest yeah. tap. I blew it. It's like, hey, that's me. Yeah. Like, I know what I did. Like, okay, I'll, I, you know, when you can acknowledge what you did wrong, it makes it so much easier for your your, your people to help you with adjustments. You know, and and it also shows that you're saying, I don't need to adjust. I'm the idiot that threw the ball. Right. It is my fault. I know I don't need to adjust. I just yeah. need to throw better. Now, is he going to throw better here for three in a row? Yeah. Yes, he yeah. is. That looked good. That, that, those last two look like the strikes he had uh, in, in game two. Like, th those were very nice. Yep. A screaming, and if you missed game two, we had a quick interview with the vice president of 187 Inc. Yep, his name is it's Shane. Yep. I, I don't remember what his last name is. I want to say Collison, but no, I don't it's think Carelock. it's Collison. What? Carelock. I was close. Yeah, you I am terrible with names. So Shane Carelock <laughs> was very happy with what he did in game two. He's still happy with what he did in game three. Now, Joe's going to try to match him here. If he doesn't keep this close, he does. Okay. Yeah, so we're. So max score-wise, I mean, we're only in the fourth frame. Max score-wise, you're looking at 279 and 280. Yep. So one pin game. Um, yeah, one pin, one pin game. This is what you like to see in a cruiserweight matchup, yes. by the way. Yeah, and you, then you, everybody goes whining online, those are a cruiserweights, those should be heavyweights. Yeah. If you saw games one and two, you can understand why they're cruiserweights. Well, yeah, because game one looked look welterweight-ish. Yes, you know, it did. Those look like two guys under 200 that, you know, were just glad to be here. And the cruiserweights, you know, they have they have their heavyweight mentalities at times where they can do what they're doing right now. But it's going to be what happens when they open. Can they yep. recover? Do they start overthinking? Do they adjust? You know? and, and it seemed like they were overthinking and overadjusting game one. At the end of game two, Kevin Phillips figured it out. Now at the beginning of game three, it looks like Gerald destroyed the party and he's figured it out. Both bullers on a three-bagger. Phillips right low, looking to maintain the lead, and for ordering him to do that, this has got to be a four-bagger. Yeah, let's see, let's see. Come on, Kevin. We're going to get a hand bone. And uh, he does not seven. do it. Seven pin. Gerald yeah. will take the lead. Yeah, that, 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 that kind of hit, like you have one in game two like that, where it just hit lighter than the rest and just kind of like a dud. It just didn't, didn't react. It didn't pop. Say hand bone. We're thinking about meat. Because I'm sure they, the Myrtle Beach Bulls got a great breakfast. I'm assuming they're gonna have a great dinner to go along with it. I'll tell you what, this center is the food is fantastic. I've had the uh, 
I had a pizza the first night. Uh, the wings are phenomenal. Um, our our, our uh, staff colleague, Jason Hale, he loves the blue cheese wings. Uh, the, the food here is fantastic, man. It's, it's Jason Hale also no stranger to World Championship Series, and he's gotten a, he's had a belt on his own accord. Kevin Phillips with the spare. Right now, Phillips is down by around eight pins. Going to the second half of game three, we are tied one game apiece. So whoever wins this will take command back of this match. Obviously, very, very far away from being over. Yeah, but it, it, it's, it's the great part is it doesn't matter. Uh, doesn't this matter is, this is gonna go six or seven. E I hope it way. does. It's guaranteed to go five. Actually, no, it is guaranteed to go six regardless. Ball here oh, no, and he the, the Actually, window. no, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. It's guaranteed to go five, and Kevin's wrong if he thought that that was a good shot. Two, four, ten. Yeah, and you right see it. Now, the, the, he had it, and then he lost it. Yeah. And now he could only hope that Gerald's lost it along with him. Yeah. These, these guys, and you're, you're seeing it, too, where they can't get ahead of themselves. They have to stay in the moment. You know, he did the right thing there. He didn't try to throw at that to try to pick it up. He made sure he got the two because the, the wood in the game is what's going to matter. Yeah, the overall wood it doesn't matter at all, as Ray correctly said earlier. However, you never know what's going to happen. Right now, Gerald looking in good shape. Another strike still keeps the lead going. However, you never know if he creates a hideous mess. Those two pins could be very important and come back to be a factor in this game. But it will not be a factor in this game at all if, Graham, if Gerald continues bone. to do that. Yeah, there we go. Now we got the hand bone. So, yeah, it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't the prettiest pinfall in there, but it, it doesn't matter, you know. These if guys. You want, if you want pretty, go to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Absolutely. Not, not a bowling alley. And that's too much pretty in a bowling alley. Even Let's though the see. art on the side of the wall here is actually pretty nice. That's pretty. So he gets five in a row, we'll point to a nice, beautiful sunset out on the Pierce and Myrtle Beach. Yeah. Seven frame, that ball looks good for five in a row, it is. So that'd be a nice little Cinco Sacco from our Rolling Rebel fans. So five in a row for Williams. Now let's just say you're Kevin Phillips. What do you do now? Well, you gotta go, you gotta go the seventh, you gotta, do the, you gotta have the seventh frame first. So if you know what you did wrong and you flush the strike, then you can try to put the pressure back on. If you throw this one out the window again, then you go ahead and you start playing it on game four. Yeah, this has got to be a strike race. Absolutely right. It there you is. Go. Yeah, so he's going to have to keep striking. He's going to need some help from Gerald. Or, or, you know, sometimes people come over to you and said Dark Cloud or whatever. He's going to yeah. need one of those. Yeah. Best Gerald can do is a 234. You've already said the best. I'm sorry, wrong. Best Kevin can do is 234. You've already said the best of what Ger Gerald can do, and that would be set 280. Yeah, he's still, yeah, still on that 280 pace through seven, so that's pretty good. Um, we just, hopefully Kevin knows that his sixth frame was on him, and he's not trying to overthink this right here. If he can bury this one, it will put pressure on Gerald. Well, he's going to show up here. That was a double dribble. Is he going to go away yeah. with it? Yes, he does. Ooh. Yeah, this, this house has had some double dribbling. Um, I noticed that a lot yesterday. The double dribbles are, are entertaining at times. Well, actually, he had, actually had a 300 shot on uh, this pair yesterday. Uh huh. With the double dribble? Huh? With the double dribble? Um, no, I don't know. That was with the double dribble. I think the double dribble was... Uh, it happened once or twice on 9 and 10. I was right beside that yesterday. But, you know, it's all good. Gerald's up right now. A strike effectively will end this game, and it's going to. Gerald Williams right now up by 46 at least. Actually, no, 46 exactly going into nine frames. So he doesn't even doesn't even need a mark right now. From a map. Actually, yes, he will. He will still need a mark. 
Yeah, it's, it's, it's over, but it's not over. Yeah. Um, it's just one it's, of those It's things. over, but he can't feed the ball to the gutter monster. Right. Don't, don't feed it to the gutter, um, and, and don't big four again. You yeah. know, that's kind of the kind of the big things. He can he can just be clean the rest of the way. We're going to game four with high caliber up 2-1. Very true. Yeah, that doesn't look like it's going in the gutter. That all, uh, almost looked like well, a big four, though. 4-7. Four, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the, oh, 4 7 10 was looking realistic there for a second. Yeah, so doing the math here quickly, assuming, and again, it's an assumption that he makes a spare, he will not need a mark in the 10th frame. No, and he won't make a spare. Yeah, because Kevin, all Kevin can do is 234. Um, and he's already uh, nine open. Will give uh, nine open from Gerald will give him a 236. And yeah. as you said correctly, the best Kevin can use is a 234. So you are correct. This game effectively is over. The only thing that Gerald just has to do is not make a hideous mess in the tenth frame, and he'll be fine. Yeah. So the difference between this game and the first game, um, with Kevin trailing, getting up in the tenth, or getting up in the ninth, rather. Is if, if he doesn't strike here, then the, then he'll have the 10 frame to play with. Right. To big, figure out what he needs to do for game four. Cor correct and correct. So, but Ray is absolutely right. This ball must be a striker from a mathematical standpoint. The game is over. Well. Okay. We're still. We're, we're not. We're not done yet. I'm not dead yet. In the words of Monty Python. Yeah. You know what else I like besides game sevens? Ninth and 10th frame roll offs. <laughs> I yes. love them. And it'd be Must great have 9th and 10th frame roll off. I would love the 9th and 10th frame roll off in a game seven. Yes. Preach, preach for the Ray. Man, preach. I'm, I'm telling you, it, it makes it so so exciting to see people, the, the heartbreak, the excitement, yes. the all those emotions that people are going to go through on and, the winning and the losing end of that. And people that are watching are, being, are probably saying, like, Gordon and Ray, they're so mean. Yes, we are. Yes. Absolutely 100%. Now, this game may not completely be over yet. <laughs> Kevin's going, I'm not dead yet. That's Still right. not dead. No. Right. Yeah. In the UBA, we have seen all sorts of crazy stuff happen around here. Until the game is mathematically locked down, you never know around here. Yeah, well, we experienced that, um, my team experienced that last year, where in the uh, final four of the Southeast Conference right. playoffs, we went to 2020 tie and had to do a whole nother game to break the tiebreaker. Game to figure out. Oh, oh see? look at this. And so the thing is, is I know you said nine out is it's it's going to be good. You but still got to throw the nine. Yeah, because I mean we've seen still a six. Still got to throw the nine. We've seen a six. A big four, and Kevin can sneak this one out. Yeah. So you never know around here, or yeah. or maybe we have a little golf action and we get four. Yeah. However, that all being said, this is still a huge ball for Mr. Phillips, and in order to put any sort of pressure on him, all the pins have got to go down. Ted frame here really needs oh, a strike. Good. Uh, uh, okay. All right, a little bit more margin. Yeah. Now eight one will be good. Nine a nine zero obviously will be good, and eight one will be good. Yeah. Yeah. So it's all about the first ball. Yep. A big four or a Greek church or a golf score will still be a nightmare for Gerald. And here we go, 10th frame, this is game two. He doesn't like that shot. Oh my goodness, he gets away Jesus. with it. Anything could happen here in the UBA. Oh, and a ball that was almost destined for a seven or six no. count and all the pins go down. Hey, Ray, talk us through this one. Hey, so he's been, so Kevin uh, uh, Kevin just had to witness uh, Gerald show us that he's the best lefty on the pair. And he's a right-handed bowler. He's a right-handed bowler. But I mean, Kevin, you, think, you were staring at me when he threw the ball. And to be quite honest, you're much better staring at me than looking at what just yeah. transpired. Because he got a strike without hitting the head pin. That's what happens. It's part of the game. Yeah. And that is a much more traditional strike than he just threw. Yeah, that, that was an oh my goodness. That was, the, yeah. Because he, he threw a ball, he knew it was crap. <laughs> And it still was crap, but just scored really well. You know? That's the doesn't thing about. It doesn't matter what the pins say down there, it matters what the scoring says up there. No, it, but that's where bowling is so similar to golf. You know, you can hit a terrible shot, but it gets a great bounce. 
and it ends up better. Baldwin, you just get the ball down there, and sometimes, hey. Well, the, the one break that Kevin thought he was going to get, he didn't. At the end of no. game three, Gerald Graham, 258. Kevin Phillips, 233. Gerald's up two games to one. And now, basically, for this to continue, we need Kevin to win game four. Yes. Well, it would be nice. We don't need anybody to do anything at this point. No. But if we want to see game seven, we want to see Kevin win game four. We're yes. rooting for you, Kevin. Appreciate it. Yes. All I'm going to do is keep doing what I do. That's right. We're not rooting for anybody to win. We're rooting to try to see a game seven. That's what we're right. rooting that's for. The, that's what we're at. Right. It's looking like we may go seven. That's right. That's what we're thinking. We're battling. That's right. All right, so meanwhile, while we're detaining Kevin, he actually has to start game four. Yeah. Yeah, and, in, and the thing is, though, Gerald did say that this game would go five in the pregame interviews. He said five. So, well, is Gerald right or are we right? I'm hoping we're right. Well, for it to go five, Gerald's got to win the next two games. For it to go more than five, Kevin's got to win at least one of the next two games. But ever since Kevin split in the sixth that last game, he threw the ball really well. He's, he's, he's throwing the ball better than Gerald. Well, that 233 would have been good either game one or game two. Not good no. game three, but there's another strike to start off game four. Yeah. By the way, that's six in a row for actually, no, it's not. He threw a nine on the last count. Yeah. That would have been six that in a row for Kevin Phillips. Yeah. Right now, Gerald ended game three with three in a row. Yep. What does he start game four with is the question. And the answer is a flat tempin. Mm. Yeah. Now, is it time to make the adjustment or did you just do a bad shot? I think you just do a bad shot. It just looked a little hard, um, a little long on the right. Like there's no, he don't need to make an adjustment yet. Because the lanes have come, the lanes are coming to them. Um, as you, you see the score increasing, there's going to be a transition game in here if it goes long enough. But, Oh. You know, on, on, the, on the point or the hails of that, we saw at the end of actually middle of game one, Kevin Phillips yank the ball and go wide left on yes. the pin. And we just saw an instant play from that from Gerald Graham. It was an yeah, instant replay, just two different people. Like, it was, it was crazy. Like it was, but the, ball re, the, the ball reaction was the same. You, you hate missing 10 pins inside. Um, and the thing is, you know, Gerald has to get right back up. Forgot about it very well. Very good, sir. Just, you know, you got to have a short memory in this. And that's the good part about the way they bowl, where they go right lane, left lane, you know, and do the back to back, because you would hate to have done happen, that happened to you on the left lane, and then you got to sit there on the bench, so to speak. And wait, wait, and wait, 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 wait. And think about it. And he was able to throw it, he missed it, get back up on the left lane, bury a strike. Well, and Kevin so, Phelps right now wants Gerald to remember that shot because that would represent the hole that he's currently in if Kevin Phelps wants to throw a double right here and he Ooh. does not 10-pin. Or maybe yeah. that 10-pin will remind him, wait, I just saw Gerald miss that. I yeah. better make the adjustments to make sure I don't give the charity back. Yeah, I don't know if these guys are mental midgets like me, but I'm, I'm very <laughs> I'm very bad with that where I'll be like, man, I just did that. That just happened. So-and-so just like... I have trouble blocking that stuff out of my head sometimes, too. That's now, what it, keeps it, me in the cruiserweight area, and I can't get up to the heavyweight area. If I do that, and then I make the next one, my mind is just full of four-letter vulgarities that, again, I do not want to talk about caffeine TV. Oh, Kevin Phillips will make the spare, so he will be up by around 11 pins as we yes. go into third frame. So, <coughs> excuse me. So when you said his name, his nickname Viper, where, where, were you, where do you think the Viper came from? I don't know, maybe Coiled ready to strike? We can ask Shane that if we can pull him over here. Shane being the vice president of 187 Inc., who was nice enough to join us. Because I keep, so Is he still there? Yeah, he's still there. Maybe we'll get him I, later on in the game. I keep thinking, uh, I'm waiting for the Viper to hit an RKO out of nowhere. Well, let's see if he balls hit an RKO out nice. of nowhere. That's a good he one. does. Yeah, that one looked good the whole way down. Except that was not out of nowhere. He no, buried that no, one. No, he buried that one. Gerald's the one that's been getting strikes out of nowhere. Yep. Um, Kevin's have been solid. Gerald's been more energy, more pin action, a little more luck. Well, you've you've said that earlier, and you've and you've been absolutely right. Both 
bowlers have a different strategy when it comes to playing the lane. Kevin is definitely down and in. Gerald, as we are going to be seeing here, the song about ball out, waiting for it to come back. Sometimes it's worked, and sometimes we've seen some hideous messes. Let's see if he makes an adjustment on frame four. He does not. Two pip. He, he deserved the 4-9 on that one. That, that, that checked up on him. Um, he deserved the 4-9, but I'm he's sorry, I said 2-pin. You're right, it is a 4-pin, and you're absolutely right. There should have been a 9 to accommodate it. Yeah, he, he, he deserved the 4-9, but he's he's been getting such great pin action on his shots that it, it took the 9 out for him right there. It's been a number of times during this match where he's left 9 pins and 10 pins, and they have fallen before the racks come down. Yeah, yeah it, it, he's, he's doing very well getting the pin action. He's scoring well. He's not throwing the ball well, but yes. it's getting the results. And the yeah, results, we're in the results business. This, this bowling is results oriented. Yes, it is just like that first ball strike in that last game in the 10th frame. Right. Uh, yikes, if you just joined us, Gerald Graham is up two games to one. However, he is down on game four. That will help though with the strike over on lane three. Looks like he's got to figure out lane four. Yeah. So Kevin Phillips on his turn on lane four, a double here will build the lead up. He's already up by 11, could make it 20 or even 30 yeah. with a double in the next two frames. Yeah, Kevin needs to put pressure and he needs to do it now. Don't don't wait a long round, hit that strike here. Let's, let's keep it moving. Well, a double does two things. Number one, not only does it add pressure, it adds pressure and you said this earlier, Gerald was sitting thinking about what the heck did he do on lane four. Now he's got to figure out what the heck do I do on lane four. And oh, by the way, if it's not a strike, I'm going to be down even further to Kevin Phillips. Yeah. And he's got to be thinking that now because Kevin Finn Phillips, now with a double, looking to throw a strike on lane three, which is a lane that right now he's not had any issues with. And if you notice over there, it's considerably a little bit more quiet on high caliber side. Yeah. It looks like the cheerleaders have gone out for a coffee break. Yeah, I think they might have, yeah, might have, might have ran to the ladies' room for a minute. Pom-poms um, right now have nobody yeah, occupying there's no the movement. little handles. Yeah, there's no movement. <laughs> no movement on the pom-poms. No, no movement on the pom-poms. Um, they could just be confident in Gerald, too. Pom-poms are silent. Kevin Williams is wow. not. three. Sorry, Kevin Phillips is not. Three in a row for Kevin Phillips. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it's a 21-pin lead, and it will be a bigger deficit if Gerald Williams does Gerald Williams, Gerald Graham does not throw a strike. Yeah, and the thing Gerald with, Williams is a New York Yankee, was a New York Yankee baseball player. Yeah. Well, Great the, player, by the way. The thing with Gerald is, you know, we're talking about him sitting now. He left the 10 pin twice on the right side. Is now it's like, now you're, you're now you're trailing. So he can either get this or he can leave a worse than just a 10 pin. And he got it. So well, that's he, good. Does, he does get it, that cuts down the bleeding. Yeah. Deficit's only 21 pins. Gerald right now going on to lane three, neither bowler, at least this game, Kiss of Death, has had an issue with with lane three. Kiss of Death alert here. Yeah. Kevin no. is hoping that the Kiss of Death continues. Gerald obviously hoping it doesn't. Gerald right now down by 21 pins in game four. A strike here forces pressure on Kevin Phillips. There's a strike. Hey, we got some noise. All right, the bathroom break is over. Bathroom break is over. Yep. The ladies are back. The, the you know, and, and tell Gerald's getting a little high five from uh, one of our former world champs, Josh Pittman, on the lanes beside him. You know, so that's yeah, always a pretty good thing. Got a lot of bell holders over there. Ryan, yep. your order's ready, Ryan. Going into the second half of game four. This is a game that Kevin Phillips really wants because he wants to even this up at two games apiece. If Gerald comes back, comes back out of the deficit, then he'll be up 3-1. Six frame coming up. Yep. Phillips yep. on a three bagger, looking to extend it to four. There's a shot. Yeah, that good. ball looks good to me. Oh, Ooh. ten pin. And I heard Shane in the back saying, "Nope." Mm. Was that really a nope? When he released that ball, I could swear that I heard someone say nope when he released the ball was up for me. Oh, he said hold. So Shane, is Kevin just awake during the even numbered games during this match? He just wants to go to bed during games one and three and then wake up during game two and four? <laughs> Kevin likes to always make the mattresses, uh, matches interesting, that's for sure. He likes to make us all sweat a little bit. 
Well, he's definitely done that. He needs to make the spare. Or once again, he will relinquish the lead to Gerald Graham. Yeah, a lot of Kevin's matches have gone game six and game seven. Looks like he'll make the spare, and he will. There you go. And all the confidence in the world. I have all the confidence in the world in him. All right, Shane's got a lot of confidence. Kevin right now has confidence on lane three. And he should, because all he's done this game is those strikes there. Technically, he is still up. However, if Gerald wants to increase the number of strikes that he threw from three to five, then Gerald will either tie the game or take the lead, depending on what Kevin does here in frame seven. Kevin's been throwing some beautiful shots here on three. He has. Let be another one. That's a little high flush. Yeah. Uh, high nice. flush is right. That look good. You only, only need that ball to go about 10 feet for you knew that was going to be that. By, by the way, if both bowlers go out the door, it will be matching 259s, and you will get your two-frame roll-off yeah, that I you wanted. It. I love it. Yes, two-frame roll-off. Let's go, two-frame roll-off. And the best part about it is they'll turn around and look at me like, what do I do? What do we do? You know, so it'll be, <laughs> it'll be fantastic. Yeah, you and me both, sir. Gerald Williams look at uh, Gerald Graham looking to match, and he does. Keep saying Gerald Williams, stop it, Gordon. Yeah. Williams is his first name, not a second. William, Gerald, Graham, four in a row, going into the eighth frame. Or we can just say champ, because he is still champ. The we champ just, is here. Champ. All right, five in a row. Let's see if we can get five here. We've had five in a row once before. Well, if he gets another one, that keeps the match tied. Looking to keep the match tied. Ooh, oh, no, where is that ball no. going? He, now, that, the second he let got that go, both of us went, uh-oh. Yeah. That, that, that ain't coming back. It got too close to the grade board. It, it was too close to the grade board. Gutter Monster almost got a little hungry there. Yeah. Mm, was, look at this burning ball coming my way. That was, that, was, that was not looking good. It was looking like it was going to go in the drink. And um, he's fortunate to only leave the one, two, eight. He is. There probably should have been a lot more pins and maybe a 10 pin out there to go along with it. Yes. Either way, regardless of whether or not he makes the spare, Kevin Phillips will have the lead going into the eighth frame. Will Joe at least get the mark here? He will. Yes, he did. Good. Clean it up. So he's happy about the spare, however, and a big however here. Any mark, Kevin takes the lead. If he doubles in the eighth and ninth, that puts a lot of pressure on Gerald. And again, this is a game that Kevin really wants because if he gets it, he evens this match up at two games apiece. If he does not get it, it is 3-1 Gerald. Viper up right now, looking to strike, a frame. A little extra fidgeting there. It's taken a little bit more time than I would suggest. Yeah. At this point, that ball, though, does look good. It is. Oh, Kevin, take all the time in the world that you want. Forget yeah. anything that me and Ray are talking about at this moment. Well, it, you worry about you worry about him thinking about, um, you know, hand placement or something, because he just yep. he, he spent more time not taking his time really to throw the shot, but, like, it felt like he was fidgeting, like he was trying to figure out if his grip was right, um, what maybe hand adjustment he was going to do, like. Well, a strike right here will give him a potential 23 pin lead and put a lot of pressure on Gerald because he only has one frame left and Gerald will have two. Yep. And keep in mind, he has not missed on lane three yet. And it doesn't look Hello. like he's going to miss now either. There and he go. doesn't. Three, another three in a row for Kevin Phillips. Yeah, I keep, I keep waiting for that hold to go away. I keep waiting for some of Kevin's shots to, to go more head pin. But right now, stay there, dude, because it's... You know, old guy, it stay there because well, it's striking for you. Old guy is averaging between 16 and 17 miles an hour on the shot. Yeah. That's a good way for that hold to not go away if you're adding speed to it. <laughs> Meanwhile, Gerald, William, uh, Gerald Graham, there's another strike. And if you, if you look at Gerald's speed, it's only 0.15 miles an hour faster than Kevin. So both of them throwing the ball equally as fast. Yeah. 
But right now, as, as you pointed out, straighter is greater. Yeah. And that may be the difference in this game. Now, going into the time frame, the best drill can do is a 236. Any sort of mark, assuming that Kevin gets good count and he will win. And in order for even for him to need the count, Joe's gonna have to strike out and he doesn't. There's a 4-8. Right, this so game is almost effectively over. So, Gordon, the winner of this match is going to take take on this guy from the New World Order. Uh, oh, let's have a chat with the guy from the yeah, New World so, Order. So, Kenny, what what have you seen so far? How many of these games have you seen so far? I've only seen the, some parts of them. Um, I ain't seen a whole match of none of them yet. Well, they're, they're, it looks like they're going to be tied at two. Um, not the, Kevin, I feel like Kevin's throwing the ball better. But Gerald's just scoring better at times. He's getting more pin carry late, things like that. And he's got a better, bigger cheering section. Um, and we know how about your guys' cheering section and how that'll be. Um, what, who would you rather face in this match? Does it, does it even matter to you? To be honest, I really don't know neither one of them. So I, don't, I guess it doesn't really matter. Yeah, because, I mean, you got um, Gerald here is the current champ. He's bowling in the Deep South. Um, Kevin, he bowls in Queen City. And you guys are doing a pretty good job in, in uh, Triad. So um, now you're going to be bowling at Triad, is where the match will be next month. Um, how well do you bowl there? Um, I don't even bowl league. I haven't bowled league there probably in four years. But we have enough tournaments and stuff that go on yeah. at, at there. So is it a house you feel good about? I feel pretty good about being there. Let's go back to, uh, let's check Kevin out here and see if he can close this game out. Yeah, I, I believe if my math is correct, a seven on that first ball and the game's over. And he's gonna get a that's lot it. more than that. That is game All right, that locks Kevin. it up. So it's officially official that it's a two, uh, two, two now. So um, yeah, I know both these guys will put up a fight and I know that um, you just got done sweeping your last opponent. Uh, how did that match go for you? Um, it went pretty good. Um, I felt good about throwing the ball and um, it was 4-0. Excuse me. So. Yeah, and I mean, you were, you were, it was a righty versus lefty, and it's always, as a righty myself, I always love to see the righties come out on top. Yes, me too. Well, thanks for joining us, Kenny. Appreciate it, man. All right, yeah, th this game is over, and we are that step, one step closer. Well, he's glad to do that now and not in the first ball. Yeah, he, 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 that's the same thing Gerald did. Remember, Gerald did that where yeah, he, he threw that. Yeah, four, like, ah, yeah, whatever the game's yeah. over, I don't care. It's like, it's like somebody told him, hey, the game's over, and he's like, oh, thank God, and then just, <laughs> threw, it out, just threw it out the window again, so. Very much so. Let's see if this is gonna be an area check or if he wants to make the spare. We'll find out momentarily, depending on where he places the ball. And he's gonna try to make the spare. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, oh, he does. Ma made us fair when it didn't matter. I love it. Adds a little bit of extra sass yeah. to the procedure. At the end of game four, Kevin Phillips, 246. It, it, it Gerald it. Graham, yes, I got the name right this time, 216, and we are tied yeah. at two games apiece. It definitely helps with the, the confidence going to the next game when you, you cover up something like that. That's very good. I'm sorry, I said Q before it is not. It is KYD. And I have no idea what that means, but Kevin, let's, oh, Kevin's over there. Kevin has left me. I'm gonna find out what KYD means. I'm, I'm curious. Well, if he doesn't strike, I'm gonna start speculating. Okay, sounds good. All right, he does not get the strike. I'm gonna come over and say hi to Casey. Okay. I'm yeah, gonna see, find out if she knows what KYD means. There you go, let me know how that goes. All right, we'll find out. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go hang out, I'm gonna say hi to everybody. I'm gonna say hi to Shane very quickly. I'm assuming that you like the results of game four. Definitely like the, game, uh, the results of game four. If I can just keep Kevin out of his head, stay <laughs> calm, we should be all right for the fifth game. Yeah, now one of the things that we noticed was on lane three, we were looking for that hole to disappear. It hasn't disappeared yet. If it does, do you know what you're gonna tell him in terms of how to make that adjustment? Uh, it just all depends on how he's throwing the ball, I mean, Kevin's got a couple different releases that he can go to to get the ball to do two different things. So we'll kind of work on that as the match goes through, goes on. All right, I'm gonna quickly swing over here. Good luck again. Thanks, Gordon. You got it. And I am over here with Unicorn Life. Hello, Casey. Hi, how are you? I am 
doing good. How are you doing? Fantastic. Good. Now I'm going to come over here momentarily. I just wanted to say hi, but I had a quick question because I see Gerald's jersey says KYD in the back, and I'm sort of interested as to what that means, if I can say what that means over on uh, public international TV. Kid? Okay, that's cool. Kid? Are you going to ask me what you look like? I'm going to eventually, in the middle of this, because we're still doing the match, but yeah, I'll be coming back. Okay, awesome. So I, I definitely want to chat with you a lot, so I'll be coming back over. All right, so now I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to see Kevin Phillips got, yeah, that ball no longer held. Now, I just spoke to Shane, and Shane has already said what he's going to try to do in terms of make that adjustment. By the way, KYD is just kid. I thought that would be an anagram or something cute. It's not. It's just kid spelled well, in a different manner. Well, I don't like that. I don't know. We're going to have to fix that. I want something more interesting. I want something more original. Well, I don't know. That's just me. Well, I'm bracketologist and he's smash. Yeah, and all I can think of when you say kid. Oh, no. Well, you want to talk about smash, that's exactly what he just did with that spare, even though that's much yeah. less of a, of a smash and much more of a smush. Yeah. And, and all of a sudden, Gerald Graham has an opening for him to take the lead on game five. Yeah, he needs to capitalize on it, too. Yeah, but he, he does. You, you say, oh, no. That, that's definitely an oh, no on that spare attempt. Yeah, you can't. Now, is Gerald going to say, oh, yes, over here? Oh, yes, he does. Go. He says, let's go. Yeah, Ten pin falls down. Yeah, it looked like the six pin, uh, the four pin fell into the seven for him there. He's had far and away much more carry than Kevin Phillips had this whole entire match. Well, the carry has been what's kept him in it because he's not hitting. His shot is not as good as Kevin's. Kevin's throwing a much better shot, but the, it's not. The pin action for Gerald is just huge right now. Gerald's yeah. getting stuff splattered all over the place, and it's not a ball speed thing. We've seen their ball speed is very similar. Yep, looking to increase his lead, and he will. Sure. Lane free, that hell, you're waiting for that, for yeah. the hole to fail Kevin. It finally did. Yeah. Gerald has taken advantage of it. He's made a little quick adjustment on lane three. He now has a double. And more importantly, he's got a quick 22 pin lead. And it's only third frame. Yeah. And more importantly, Kevin is on an open, so he needs to start striking, or that 22 pin lead is going to get a lot bigger. Yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> well, no, we can. Well, we can. We can sort of make an analogy, saying a small donkey when you put the boot to the donkey's backside. Right. We didn't. We didn't. We kind of well, we'll, we'll took our eyes that way. Yeah, we took our eyes away from uh, Kevin's strike there. Um, we got to see the the jersey of the uh, the cheerleader. Uh, and, and it says little donkey putter. Punter. Yes. It's a little donkey punter, and if you can understand our vernacular, then you know right. exactly what that jersey says. Right. It, it's kind of along the lines, like you, you know the, you know, yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll just we'll leave it at yeah. that. Well, Kevin's looking to do the same over on lane oh, three, and there's easy. the double. Yeah, and that that looked good. Split eight nine, very nice. Well, so now deficit, still 22 pins. For Gerald to keep it like that, that's got to be the strike on the board. If he doesn't do that, then the deficit shrinks, which is what Kevin's looking for. And obviously, Casey and company are not looking for that. Yeah, the, the perseverance of these both of these guys, when they've made a mistake, they're not piling them on top of each other. So make, avoiding the mistake is even more important because, you know, your, your opponent isn't turning a one open into three opens. Uh, Gerald didn't like that, and it shows. No, that, that's the first ball he didn't like that didn't score well. You know, he stopped on a lot of them that, that still still went uh, Brooklyn. Yeah, if it was game one, all the pins would fall down anyway, and everybody yeah. would be uh, going, yay! But no, he deserved to leave that, and he knew it. Yep. So, and Kevin's got to be a little bit happy about this because instead of being down 22, he's down by a lot less. And if Gerald doesn't make this, he won't be down at all. Kevin will take the lead here if Gerald does not make the spare. Mm. Oh, and that just being said, he leaves a 10 pin. 
and that 7-2 just got returned back in spades because that 6-3 was also on a double. But you know, it's like I said though, it happened on the right lane and he gets to come right back on the left. So these guys have done a very, a very, very excellent, great job, whatever word you want to use in there, of forgetting. That and, is true. And getting to come back, they're not having to sit on it. I would say he's going to strike right here. Well, he needs to come back back here with a strike, and he will. Yep. And that's kind of how the, the ebb and flow has been in this game, uh, well, in this that, match, is where it's just, if well, they're messing up on the right lane. That being said, and you're absolutely right in terms of the ebb and flow, but the ebb and flow right now is also turning into who can make the bigger mistake. Yeah. Right now, the answer is Gerald. Any mark here from Kevin, and he will retake the lead. Yes. If Kevin decides he wants to repeat what he did in the second frame and the fifth frame, Gerald will hold on to the lead. Either way, match is still very close as we go into the second half of game five. If you just joined us, we are tied two games apiece. Mm -hmm. So what started as a best of seven is now a best of three. Yep. Phelps right now looking Ooh, to strike that, here, take mm -hmm. the lead back, and he does. Three in a row, the lazy seven goes down. So, so Kevin knows he did not deserve that one. He kept that ball uh, too far right, way too long. From our angle, it almost looked like he was gonna dump in in the moment. Kevin's getting Gerald Graham's pin action specialty yeah. right now. Yeah, and they're having some, uh, the five pin was wiggling after that one uh, when they set the, re the new <laughs> rack down. So it knew he didn't deserve it. They should have had some more pins up there, but hey, he, he got he got that pin action. And, and Yeah, now we noticed that that, I'm just noticing right now, that frame, okay, he's re-racked it. Yeah. I don't know if that's chivalry or gameplay right now that Kevin Phillips has re-racked it because technically that next shot would be going to Gerald, not Kevin over on lane four. Yep. So I'll just say chivalry. Yeah, and I mean, it, 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 Kevin could be one of those people that like, he likes to look at clean sets mm -hmm. around him too. And it would, Maybe he it, does. Yep. Four in a row for Kevin Phillips. Right now, yeah. he's got the lead back. He's up by 14. And now, Gerald's got a strike here or he's gonna be down by more than 14 pins. This is an ebb and flow back and forth game over in game five. Yep. And, and one of the things that you said, and we'll get back to it, at the beginning you said both bowlers were a little bit tentative. No tentativity anymore. Both bowlers attacking the pins. Here comes Gerald right now. That ball's high again. Mm. Only leaves the three. Yeah. And that probably should be a lot more. Yeah, he should have left the same thing he left uh, last time on that lane. Yep, with his mm. buddies, the six, the nine, and the ten up there. In this yep. case, just a solid three pin. However, let's look at quickly at the scores. If Kevin goes out the door, it's a 268. If Gerald goes out the door, it is a lot less. Yes, a lot less. So I believe math is 234. So Gerald's gonna have to start striking, but more importantly, he needs to play some defense, which in bowling is sort of impossible. But he needs something to happen to the Viper, maybe for him to run into a mongoose somewhere in lane four. Well, defense and bowling is not impossible. We've had world champ uh, Dennis Kilo was very good at playing defense. Um, former, that is true. Former Southeast heavyweight champ uh, Bob Benton was great playing defense. Um, he would burn your lineup on purpose. Um, I have not seen either bowler whip out the urethane yet. No, and that's good. This house, you don't need the urethane here. Um, there, I don't even think it would really work that well is just that fallback that so many people do rely on nowadays. Oh, I slightly disagree. I think the way that Gerald's throwing the ball, I think urethane would be very effective to fudging up his line. I use that F word, not the other F word. Yeah. No, I, I get it, but it's, it, I, I, I don't, I don't, and I don't know enough about these guys. Are they good enough to burn up a line and not lose theirs at the same time? I, I don't guess know, we'll see. Okay. Right now, Kevin's looking for a four-letter word that starts with F, but in this case, that word is five, because he's looking for five in a row right now. And five in a row will increase his lead over Joel Graham, and there it is. Very shot from we, Kevin Phillips. We almost got a walk out there. He almost walked that out. He sort of did. He, 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 he sort of did walk it out. I think Do you he think he's gonna walk it out over in lane two if he likes what he sees on lane three? Yeah, if he gets six in a row, because we haven't had a six bag, a uh, six bag yet. We have not. We have not had a six back from either bowler. We almost did uh, from Kevin, but we but did Kevin, not. Kevin, yeah, we did, yep, in the, the last of the 10. On, yep. on his way to try to get the 280. Let's see, I, I say he walks it out. Yeah. All right, we'll see if he does so. 
This is game five. Whoever wins this will go up three to two in this match. And if Kevin throws another strike right here, it will be oh, him. That oh, that good. ball went way outside. It no, doesn't matter. No, it goes that in. Good. That looked good. I love it. That he did old not dude. Walk that, out. that looked like an uh oh shot from Kevin. That ball comes rolling in anyway. There you go. Got the old man. Yeah, that, that old dude. <laughs> that, that, that old dude. I'm not sure if that last shot was intentional, but it looked good. <laughs> I'm going to ask him right now. Kevin, did you mean to throw that ball all the way out there in that last shot? Pardon? Did you mean to throw that ball all the way out there in that last shot? Probably not. I'll take that as a no. That's true. Yeah, that's what I thought. So meanwhile, Kevin Kevin makes a little bit of a mistake. He does not pay for it. It comes in anyway. Yeah. Meanwhile, Gerald Graham with a strike in the eighth frame going into ninth to put any pressure on Kevin at all. This ball's got to be a strike. Because yeah. right now he needs a combination. Number one, he pretty much has to go off for 234. Number two, he needs Kevin to make a mistake in either the ninth or the tenth, but preferably the ninth. Well, there's a strike there from Gerald go. Graham. And so we might we might see where this is gonna be the first time Gerald's gonna be behind. You know, Gerald could be behind 3-2. That's true. That is assuming that Kevin gets the deal done. We are not at that point yet. One more strike, and we will be at that point. Big shot here in the ninth frame. Obviously, Gerald cannot shut Kevin out. Kevin, on the other hand, with I believe any mark in the ninth or tenth, will shut Gerald out. Yeah, he's just pretty much just gotta stay clean. Don't don't Greek church back to back. Nothing, nothing crazy like that. Well, actually, it depends on the severity of the open, yeah. I should say. Because if that opens a mess, then he will need a, two marks or a double or a combo. But first things first, here comes the ninth frame. Shot here, seven looking to close out game five. Ah, oh, seven men. All right, well, he threw a good ball. Yeah, that was a good shot. So math-wise, he will need two marks. If he does if he does not get a mark here, he will need to double in the 10th. So Gerald still has some life, but the life needs to come in the form of an open from Kevin Phillips. Yeah, because if, if he makes this spare, then the life, we're gonna need to get the, uh, the paddles out for Gerald for... Well, no, yeah, mark, 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 game's over. Yep. All right, so there's one mark. Yep. Yeah, if he goes Dutch, it is a, and a Dutch means alternating spares and strikes. Dutch puts him at a 237. Best Gerald can do is a 234. Yeah. So this has either got to be an open or bad frame count. So yeah. like for argument's sake, six spares, six will not be enough to shut out Gerald, and Gerald could go to squeak this one out. No, I... Uh, if I was a betting man, which I'm not, I would give a... Uh, Get Kevin the win now. Kevin's gonna, he's gonna close it out here. Keep in mind he, he, he gonna is, strike here. Well, he has only had one open, but the open has been on lane three. He's yeah, had but more if he than one open in this match, but his lone open in this game has been on game three. But if he misses this one, it's gonna be because you asked him if he meant to throw the ball out that far. Well, I don't think he meant to throw the ball out that far, and there he goes, and there's the game. No, he, he about tugged that inside. That was uh, that was about six or seven boards left of where he was when uh, he threw it too far out to the to the right earlier. So. Very true. So any eight count in the combination of two balls, and the game's out. Yep, and we will be going to game six. Yeah. Well, Gerald's wrong in terms of the game, the match going five. It's going to go he's six. Wrong. He's wrong. That's just going to be a matter if he's going to win. Well, yeah, that's going to be the other part, the well, remember, two parter. Remember when you and I were joking about someone's going to want to see game seven? Gerald's going to want to see game seven. Yeah. Because if he doesn't, that means he loses. So there's three of us now that want to see game seven. <laughs> there's three that's of correct. us. That's correct. Because if we don't, we have a new Southeast Cruiserweight champion. This is for game five. Oh, hold up. Wait a minute. He still needs two. This is not over yet. He needs two. I, I'm, uh, damn it, Gordon. I'm hoping this isn't one of those situations where, <laughs> where he throws it two, but then still chops it. Well, if he chops it, then that's one. He strikes out, and then we have two-frame roll-off. Yep. Which, as we've said, we, evenly, both of us want to see. I'm good for those two. We are both jealous, greedy individuals yeah. that we love to see bonus bowling. So is he going to? Oh, he got the two. All right. 
He did not try to be the hero and get the spare. He knew what he yeah. needed. He got yeah. the two. 235 is going to be good. Yeah. Best that he could do is 234. Kevin was sweating a little bit. We were sort of cackling, hoping for a roll off. We didn't get it. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, if he would have took that 1144 scratch into the Unholy, he'd be doing pretty damn I'll good. I'd be going great when I have been out with 1144 scratch. Kevin, congratulations on game five. Thank you. So now we, we saw you changed a little bit on that last shot. Was that just an area check, or was, did you just want to throw a safe ball, or what was the rationale behind it? That was a mistake. Aha, another mistake. Yeah, fairly strong ball. Because I've got a shot, I'm just going to stick with my shot. Continue on. Well, so far so good. For the first time in the match, you are leading. You're not playing catch up. Now it is Gerald that's playing catch up. Yep. Yeah. I, I hope to work that to my advantage, make him press him a little bit, see how he uh, reacts to it. Well, you, you pressed him in this game, and he did not react very well. And if he does that one more time, then you're going to be the new Southeast Cruiserweight champion. That's kind of my hopes right there. All right. Now, I will just say this. Neither Ray or myself are rooting for anybody to win, but we are rooting for a game seven. Because we love Game 7. I always love Game 7. It's exciting. I've been doing this for Caffeine TV, so Caffeine TV wants to see a Game 7. We're not advocating for you to make it a Game 7. Right. We're just saying we're not necessarily rooting for you for Game 6 because we want to see a Game 7. I hear you. But we're not rooting against you. We no. just want to see a Game 7. We see a Game 7. That's right. Good luck. Yeah. Thanks. Good luck, Kevin. So for just... For those joining us on Caffeine TV, Kevin Phillips is up three games to two. Yep. We do want to try to get a game seven for everybody over Caffeine TV, yes. but we're not rooting against Kevin. We just want to see a game seven. Right. We just enjoy them. We do, we think they're good for the sport. Um, very always entertaining. It's just like Houston and Texas in the playoffs. We don't necessarily want to see either team win. I don't mind seeing Godzilla stomping on both of them, but we do want to see a game seven. Yeah, absolutely. Even though my personal route is for Godzilla in terms of baseball. Game six, whatever mistake that Kevin made, he's no longer made it. That is a beautiful no, shot. There's he, a strike. Uh, yeah, aside from that seven count, he had what, the third or fourth frame last game, and he's been throwing it great. I mean... Yeah, he went 7-2 in a shot that he already acknowledged was a mistake. Then he left the big four in a shot that he also acknowledged was a mistake. Whenever he hasn't thrown the mistakes, it's been nothing but strikes. Back to Gerald Graham, and now all of a sudden, he's got to win this game. His margin of error is zero, a.k.a. El Chipo, and that is not a great start right there. No, the 2-4-5 is not a good... Uh, that, that one doesn't make you feel good because you know you left it light, and it was so light that you didn't even get the five out, too, you know? It's it's not good. Like, that, that makes you start thinking a lot about what you just did wrong. And the other issue is now you're thinking to yourself, well, poop, it doesn't matter what I do. If Kevin throws another strike, I'm trailing again. Mm -hmm. However, he does make the spare. There you go. It's a little bit of a finicky spare, but he does make it. Yeah, he got it out of the way early. You know, yes. if, that, if that's his worst frame this game, He'll be fine. Yeah, 290 he'll be, he sh probably should be good. Yeah. And we say probably because you never know what Kevin's going to do. Yeah. Can't, cannot assume the 300, but you can't discount it either. Yeah. No, and like, you know, you know, being WCS, you know, we're all about game count. And it's and it's obviously it's 3-2 right now. But both of them scored really well. 10-55 and 11-44 yeah. isn't, isn't terrible for five games. If you're averaging 2-11 two, two over five games, you'd take that for unholy. If yeah, you're averaging uh, a little bit over 220, you'd take that too. Yeah, because there's a lot of uh, great bowlers that in, in these events, because of who they're bowling on their pair with and all things like that, they don't even break a thousand, you know? But both of these guys would be perfectly fine. If you're bowling with two good bowlers at Unholy or any other thing, if you're carving out the lines and everybody's following it, then you should vote pretty regardless. Yeah. I mean, it's the UBA. We don't necessarily get as much credit as some of the other organizations, but the bowling caliber of the bowlers is just as good, if not better. Yeah. And as Battleville and other UBA events have shown, we can not only keep up with the quote unquote better elite bowlers, we have surpassed them and beaten them a number of occasions. Yeah. Kevin Phillips we right now looking to back up what I just said. Uh, He's nine pin. Oh, no, nine pin. Kevin did not back up what I just said. No, no, he knew. Boo, Kevin Phillips. We, we should have told him. We should have told him. Yeah. Maybe he would have put that pressure on him. He would have came through for us. <laughs> we 
But no, the, the caliber of bowlers in UVA is fantastic. The caliber of bowlers in WCS is, is cream, of, cream of the crop. Yeah, it, 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 it's people that like that competitive fire. It's not always about um, the, the, the tournament earnings and all that kind of stuff. It's about the, being competitive, having that fire, being able to say, I beat that guy once, you know? Like, that's the kind of the things that are, are great about the WCS, great about the UVA. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's a great place to be. I love it here. Uh, uh, you, UB is great. If, if you want competition, this is where you go. Yeah, absolutely. And, and WCS is great because we have so many series. We've got the welterweight, which is under 200, cruiserweight, which is under 215, heavyweight can be whatever. We got a Vixen series, uh, Vixen's tag series. You got to be under 410, which we'll see at 2 o'clock today. Yeah, that's going to be fun also. And what uh, Kevin Phillips is doing is not fun. 7-10. No, that was not fun. That well, was... we want to see Game 7. And right now the previews are saying or very early on we may be seeing that Game 7. We, we may be seeing it. We may be seeing it. But I want to, I want both guys to feel good about going into Game 7, you know. The only heartbreak I want in the Game 7 to be is Kevin upset he didn't do it in, in 6. But <laughs> I don't want it to be because he, he does stuff like this right here. Well, you know, though, if I'm a bowler and I'm not leaving good count and I get my doors blown off and my butt handed me on a silver platter in game six, I actually don't mind that because it allows me to regroup quickly for a, well, yeah, I don't know what that was. It allows me to regroup quickly for a game seven versus, oh, I could have shut him out. Darn it, I missed a 10 pin. Oh, and now I got to go into a game seven. At least now, if it's there, I've got that seven frames of, okay, I need to regroup. Yeah. Kevin, I mean, we didn't mean when I, that doesn't mean that you do that early on in game six. What are you doing out there? What was that? Well, that was a pretty decent ball. Okay. I think that's the product of the house. You know, right. just, they'll do that to you once in a while. All right, well, right, right now, Gerald's bowling like he knows he's got to take this game. Double right now for Gerald Graham going into the fourth frame. Gerald potentially could be up by 34 by the time the fourth frame's over. Yep. And, and once again, it looks like the bowler that has the quick lead once again is not going to win this game. Yeah, that, that's... That happened the first five. It could happen game six <laughs> it, also. It, it could. Bowl, bowling is a sport of irony. Sport of momentum. Yep. Gerald right Ooh. now, three in a row, gets a light hit. Triple and that forward, light baby. hit... That did not show up for him game five. It's certainly showing up now. Yeah, he tripped that four pretty forward. I love it. <laughs> Hit him light, watch him fight. Yeah, that's right. That's right. He's even got, you can, you can tell when Gerald's like getting amped up, he's even put, he even puts his shoe covers on aggressively. You know, like, just like, yeah, maybe like, let's go. Like, he's got that adrenaline going. And I'll tell you this also from experience. If you get that shot of adrenaline, all of a sudden you're throwing the ball a lot better just from a mental and mental and emotional standpoint. There That's that a better wow. shot from Kevin. The question is, and it's crazy for me to say this in frame four, but the question is too little too late. Because if you're going up against somebody with a three bagger and you throw a 7-10 and all of a sudden you're letting him get a 34 pin lead on you, that is a very hard deficit to overcome. Granted, he's got enough time to overcome it, but you still have to as we go into the fifth frame of game six. Phillips is up 3-2. He can't afford to lose a game. Gerald cannot. He's got to win this one. And right now, he's coming out of the gates like, like he's got to make this game, and it's showing. Yeah, this is this is huge here. Let's see. We had to tell early. That's a strike. Ooh. Well, it should have been a strike. Yeah, he squirted that ball all the way out. It seems to me like he's trying to figure out where to throw the ball at this point. And you're absolutely right. That was a pivotal shot in the fifth frame because if he struck here, he would at least put some pressure on Gerald. Right now, even if he makes a spare, there is no pressure on Gerald at this point. I completely expect Gerald to bury the next two shots and have a five-bagger. Yeah, yeah, I think we'll be talking about Gerald's 290 pace here uh, in the sixth. Yep. Kevin Phillips will make the spare. Yeah. Let's see. We both predict that Gerald's going to throw two strikes in the fifth and sixth frame. Let's see if we're both right. Yeah. And for us being around not just pulling but the WCS as long as we have, we sort of already know from a gut feeling when the swings are coming. Yes. 
I completely agree with Ray. And there's been many times that we've both agreed on something in this match, and this is one of them. And we're both gonna be right. Yeah. There's another strike. And we both think we, he's gonna extend this out to five in a row as we go into the second half of game six. And this is looking more and more like our favorite time in the universe, yes. which is game yes. seven. That's yes, right. Yeah, game our, seven. Our, our favorite season in sports, game Woo seven. Doesn't matter if it's raining, shining, hurricaning, nope. tornadoing, which I had to drive through to get here last night. Or snowing, it's game seven. You are the it's second person I've season. heard say hurricaning. I was hurricaning and tornado. Yeah. I've never seen horizontal lightning. I did last night. Yeah, that, we're, we're, right. di we're different down here. Yes, you are. And five in a row. Five in a row and both there. Ray and I called it yes. going into it. We're both right on this. Yep. Five in a row, and all of a sudden, we're looking at a 60 plus pin lead for Gerald Graham. And unless lightning strikes the pins and incinerates his bowling equipment, we will be going to a game seven. The best that Kevin Phillips can do right now is a 236. And he would already be short by a lot of pins. Six frame here, looking at least key in, he does. Looks good, yeah. Have you ever seen horizontal lightning in Myrtle Beach? Or yes. at least in your neck of the woods? Yeah. I mean, Explain it, it, to me how that works, because I saw it and I'm like, wait, lightning is not supposed to do that. Well, there's just, uh, the South is just crazy. We, we, we're just <laughs> we're just different down here. Like, when it comes to all that kind of stuff, um, the, the weather, like, there's a, the weather at Myrtle Beach reminds me of the, of the, the rain on Forrest Gump. Uh-huh. Where you got it coming from you sideways, it comes up from underneath. It's been terrible. You drive the strip here, and you feel like your car is going to flood sometimes. It's crazy. But, yeah, it's but how awesome do you have the same horizontal time. lightning? I've never seen that. Well, I mean, th th listen, there's there's a lot of a lot of younger college kids around that see a lot of things horizontally. They see a lightning come from all kind of directions. Uh -huh. So maybe you just saw, maybe it was like a gas pocket or something, and you saw it horizontal. But it wouldn't surprise me, honestly. Like. Stuff like that, I, I, you just get used to it down here. You just don't even think of it being a horizontal uh, uh, I'm now thing. just expecting the next time I see a tornado down here, I'm expecting Auntie M and a couple of broomsticks. And yeah, I mean, it's possible. May, maybe the Wicked Witch of the West. Yeah. Or maybe I'm going to see nine strikes in a row because Joel Graham has already got six in a row, and I'm not going to bet against him on the eighth and ninth frames. No. Definitely eighth frame coming up, looking for seven in a row. Yeah, the only thing that can stop us from a game seven at this point is horizontal lightning on lane three. Yeah, yes, <laughs> that, that is correct. On the on the uh, on the approach, actually, here in a second. And the thing is, he's he's actually surprisingly he stayed in that blue ball all day. Yeah, he's just made the adjustments. That ball squirting out. That looks good here. It does. Seven in a row for Gerald Brown. There you go. Again, he goes out the door. It's a 290. Huh? Kevin Phillips right now, again, the best that he can do is a 236. And no, you're not seeing a mistake over at the difference area. You are looking at an 84-pin deficit right now at this point. And Kevin, Kevin Phillips has got to be real happy that he can afford to burn this game because that's what he's doing. Kevin. Oh. So Kevin's in that spot where he's not mathematically eliminated yet. It's not looking good for him, so it's, he needs to just make sure that he's lined up. And that looked great. He needs to make sure that he's lined up and ready for game seven. Because, like we talked about with the lightning, if we don't have the lightning and stuff soon, um, to slow Gerald down here, because my. I would, I would, if I was a betting man, Gerald's gonna shoot 290 this game. He's fired up. He's just, he's ready to go. He's, he's having a great time. And he's trying to defend his title. Another one for Kevin though. Yep. So they come a little light. You saw that five pin shot over to the seven, like the way it did. Um, didn't go back towards it, but it almost came in, came in front of the seven. 
but the next one was there for Kevin to take care of it. So, um, all right, so coming to the ninth for Gerald, all he's got to do is not, um, no crazy mess, no Greek church, no gutters, no big fours, nothing like that. And we'll be, and he'll be walking into a game seven. So that's so he's already at 230 regardless what happens. Um, so he just needs to keep the ball a, a two count actually is enough to win here. So we are going to game seven. Me and Gordon talked about how much we loved him and we're going to get it. mistakes late once they wrap the matches up and so far they've been able to forget about them going into the next game Spot this two pin here for um, for Gerald, even though it really doesn't matter at this point. Could just hit the button, but he wants to get another shot in there. We'll let him get another shot in there once they respot the two here. Looking for the 290, we're not getting it, but and a big butt here that is more than good enough to win game six. Two favorite yeah. words coming up. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm Game seven. Game seven, man. I love it. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Russell's back. So I do not like it here today. Just here today, like as of this moment, I went 194, 186, 177. Like I have no idea what's going on over here. Thank God I'm not going for the belt here. So in other words, Ducky wants to have his title heavyweight title match here in this building. And that's what it sounds I like today. Yeah, sure. We're gonna try it. Uh, well, we are going to be at Triad next month. If, if hey, y'all want to come wanna, down to Triad? You know, yeah. I mean, I don't uh, think they'll give us that stanger for a whole month, but yeah, yeah, I'll come down to Triad. Make it a Thanksgiving, that's a Thanksgiving bash, right? Well, maybe no. if you had the belt and you beat him, then you can defend the belt down here at Triad with whoever you're bowling up against. No, we have last, last team standing is here this year. Ah, okay, last it, team standing. Even a UBA event. Yeah, there you go. Right. There you go. Well, Jarrell Graham will not shoot the 290, but he will shoot a 256. Yeah. That's very impressive, man. It was very good. He, he, these guys have both been resilient in their matches. Um, Gerald, his last defense was against Patrick Rogers from High Octane. That um, he, Patrick Rogers is actually our rep in the North-South match where he won, he won that for us. Um, nice little chunk of change he brought back. Um, Gerald was, you know, like I said, he wasn't able to get, but he, he he had to defend against Patrick, and they went through game seven. So these guys are both battle tested. Um, Kevin Phillips to get here, he both he, he beat um, Jake Wilcox from Hitman. You know, he beat him in six. You know, and it's just game sixes and sevens aren't new to these guys. You know, yeah. so this is great. This is I'm, this this next game is gonna be ecstatic. I'm ex I'm excited. Yeah, you also have to have the mental wherewithal to be like, hey, I'm up, or hey, I'm down, I need to get to a game seven, I need to get to a game six. So, and sometimes it doesn't matter how blinded you are. I mean, Kevin Phelps is gonna finish somewhere in the 220s. You know, so he definitely wanted to end this one. The problem is, yeah. you know, how are you gonna deal with seven spare eight in a row? It's not the easiest thing in the world to do, and that's one of the reasons why we're going to a game seven. No, it, it ha and it happens. I mean, there's plenty of times where guys will shoot a great game and lose. It, it happens. I mean, you know, he's, he's going to be sitting on 1369 here. I mean, that would be, that would be great in any in any event. 
Well, it's good enough to go 3-3 at the end of game six. Gerald Graham, 256. Kevin Phelps, 225. And now we are not rooting against anybody. We're rooting for the better bowler because now we have game, game seven. seven. There you go. So I wish good luck for everybody. Even though, again, only one bowler can win and only one bowler can walk out of here with the Southeast Cruiserweight title. Yeah. There we go. At the beginning of game one, Gerald went first. Therefore, Gerald will be going first now. Yep. In the, in the gamesmanship between these two, um, and we're get, getting a little bit on camera there as well, like, you know, they're both excited to be in this moment. They're both respectful of the game, respectful of their opponent. Um, yes, they're going to be, there's going to be energy from whoever wins this. The, however it goes, it's just going to be, it's just going to be great, man. I, I love Game 7s, man. I can get so giddy, I can't even keep my thoughts straight. <laughs> game 7s are always fun. They're great. As you said, it's, it now comes down to adrenaline, mental acuity. What did you learn for the first six games that you can deal with now? What adjustments do you need to make? And both bowlers are starting, and I believe Gerald goes first. Yeah, Gerald's going to go first, and, and the main thing is just uh, they, they're, they're clearing the deadwood for him. Uh -huh. um, yes. The, the main thing is they're, um, the main thing for these guys is they, they're not going to have time to second guess themselves. They gotta just, whatever decisions you make, you got to stick with and you got to go. Don't worry about anything else. Just, you've got 10 frames. Bowl your best for 10 frames. You can't make adjustments for later, all that kind of stuff. You have to be confident in everything you do the rest of the way. So if you just joined us expecting a seven game match, well, the first six games are gone, so it's now a one game match. That's right, for the, for the cruiserweight, champ, cruiserweight championship. So theoretically, you either saw an amazing six games or you, or you missed absolutely nothing, depending on how you're looking at it. All right. But you'll, you'll be able to go back and watch it on Caffeine TV whenever you're ready. That is true, that is true. So obviously, watch this game first, then go back and watch everything right, else. Right, absolutely. Because I don't think the delay is going to last an hour and a half, even right. though I'll be very surprised if it does. Yep. And, and another thing, just to kind of recap for anybody that is just joining us and is new to the WCS process in these matches, um, it's three to three. Total wood does not matter. Nope. Um, 1369, 1311. It could be 1500 to 1500. It could be 42 to 42. It could be 1,500 matter. to 42. It, it could be 1,500 to 42. Right? It doesn't matter. I don't know how you would have won any games with 42, but I guess that's possible. Yeah. But the, the main thing is all we're doing is... By, by the way, we're just clearing out the dead wood on that. That does not count as Joe's yeah. first shot. No, they haven't, they haven't hit the check mark yet. Well, now... Well, uh, now, now he did. Now, uh, now Kevin got a zero. Boo! Come on, Gerald. What is that? Well, they, clear, they cleared it out already. Now nah, they just cleared it out. All right. We're good to go. Yeah, except the only the only other issue that Gerald has is that he was about to throw the ball in the wrong lane. Yeah. That would not have been good, and that would legitimately boo him. No. All right, so I know... Gerald, a.k.a. Kid Graham, up he's starting game seven. I'm sorry, Ray, what was that? So, so if, since they can't hear us and they don't know, who do you who do you like? Who do you think is going to win this one? Going, going Kevin, to game seven. Who do you think is throwing the ball? Who the momentum? I, I think, where's that? Uh, I, you know what? That's a good question. I think the momentum is sort of with Gerald. But that being said, Gerald is also susceptible to mistakes or something like that. And he's premature celebration there because he thought he had the uh, strike, and he clapped, and he clapped for Tempin. Yeah, and there's nothing. He never want to clap for a dead bit. That that that's a bad feeling. Um, it's bad business. Yeah, I was gonna say that Tempin. it's really kind of a, a situation where the momentum is in Gerald's favor, but the shot making is still in Kevin's favor. I agree. Kevin has still been throwing the ball better, more consistent. Ooh, you do and, not want to do that. And as you have said that. You do not want to do that. God almighty. No, you know, well the emotion, the problem with emotion and momentum is that it is a two edge, double edged sword. Yes. Or a two daggered sword because, and a bit because you saw what he just did with that 10 pen. If Kevin can double here. That would be a huge, and I mean huge, advantage. Even yeah. if it's just spare strike, that would be a huge advantage because then, as he said earlier, that forces Gerald to press, which yeah, is any, exactly any, what he's looking to do, and that first ball's good. Yeah, yeah. Any, any lead is a good lead. 
and absolutely any lead's a good lead at the end if you're leading by one that's all you need that being said a double here would be absolutely huge because then all of a sudden Joe's got to work from behind and we've already seen he's a little bit good with that but the bigger the hole the more you got to work keep this in mind also and we've said this First six games, whoever has gotten the early lead has lost. Yes. So does this mean Gerald's going to win? Yeah, we'll I mean, find out. Yeah. I mean, it's it's crazy how all that works, you know. But the thing the thing about all those streaks, you know, so and so's made 42 straight field goals, blah 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 blah. Oh, and this time Kevin it, does get the ten pin down. It gets black clouded at some point, so could be dark clouded. Yep. Kevin Kevin's okay. going to do his best to make sure that he he breaks that streak of early lead failure. Well, keep in mind, Kevin started with a double game one, and he lost that game. He went strike, strike, spare, strike, and then he ran into the valley of the red numbers. Yes which was opens galore. Obviously, he does not want to do that now, and he cannot afford to do that now. Just like Gerald cannot afford another open. Fortunately for him, he doesn't have one. Strike in the second frame, and away we go. Gerald's got work to do. He's down 21 pins to Kevin Phillips. Yeah, red numbers are only good in Vegas. And depending, it even depends on that. Sometimes you're not betting on it. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, there's only time it could be good. There's only one color right now that both pullers are looking at, which is also, you can find that in the roulette table, and that's green. Yes. The green, that goes along with winning this match. Yes. And the silver, that goes along with wearing the belt. Oh, yeah. Sometimes gold. Got, Got a couple hundred bucks coming to the winner in this match. Absolutely. Gerald looking to double up here. Right here he does. By the way, I completely expect a very loud Vice President Shane to happen if Kevin Phillips throws another strike here. There he is, he's chatting right now. Still's gotta be happy at this moment. He'll be much happier if Kevin throws a strike. Again, Phillips need to throw a strike and maintain his 21 pin lead. To maintain any sort of lead at all, he's gotta throw a mark. Yeah, we, have, we haven't had a turkey to start the match yet, have we? We have not. We have not. Most has been two in a row. First thing that first, can he make the turkey? Yeah. Yes, gobble, he does. Gobble, gobble, gobble. And, and as correctly predicted, there's that yelp coming from Shane, vice yep. president. Yep. Phillips right now holding on to a 21 pin lead. More importantly, this game is game seven. This is the final game, regardless of what happens. This is the last game of the match. Kevin back up quick. I think Kevin's, I think Kevin's feeling it. Oh, he wants to go up there quick. The quicker that he quicker that he gets up there, the less he has to think about what he has to do. And sometimes you want to be that sort of automatic, and that's there what he's go. been four in a row. All right. Kevin Phillips, very automatic at this point. We got a Shane, you can hear him in the background saying, yeah, baby, let's yeah. go. We got turkey and ham bone here to start. Love it. Talking about that meat again. Still talking about the generous. Man, listen. That's just what it's called. It's called a ham bone. Succulent meats here. By the way, the tailgating that's done by the Southeast Bowlers is nothing less than fantastic. No, I mean, we get that from our college football, uh, our love of college football. Ah, uh, nine pin there. All right, and again, the carry that he has gotten so far in this match, he's not getting now, and that is unfortunate for him because this is the game that he needs to carry on. Yeah, I'm hoping he didn't kind of, you know, shoot his wad last game with it, you know, because he had a lot where he just, his pin action has been so great for him. Well, the this second that he term. missed that 10 pin over in the first frame, it almost seems like from a mental standpoint, he went, oh no. And the fact that Phillips has responded with four in a row, uh-oh. Oh, yeah, I got yeah, it. Yeah, no. And the fact that Kevin Phillips has responded to four in a row again, you now have a hole you need to get yourself out of, and now it is a bigger hole. Yeah. It is almost a 42 pin hole, depending on what Kevin Phillips does. Yeah, and I mean, we're starting to approach the halfway mark of game seven. Ooh. Uh, you know, I love game sevens. Gerald, Absolutely. Ger Gerald's running out of frames. Yeah, Gerald could have been kind of getting ahead of himself, too, to where, you know, instead of looking at it where he could have punched for 279, he was worried about what uh, what Kevin could punch with with 300. Yep. And oh, there's that, the cat. See, there's that, that's that pin action, the messengers, all that stuff that he was been getting. Uh, he's, he's back on it right now, so. Well, yes and no. The best he can do is a 258, yes. which is a very good score. Very However, good score. again, he needs Kevin Phillips to make at least one, if not more, mistake.
Kevin Phelps right now, fifth frame, game seven, up by 42 at this moment. Looking for five in a row to start game seven, and he's not gonna do it, three, six, 10. Uh, dis disappointed crowd too, because uh, you know, being at, at uh, Unholy right now, they would have got free drinks for the next 30, or, or discounted drinks for the next 30 minutes. Seriously, that's if, how it works down here? If they just shot 300. Yep. 300, you get discounted drinks for 30 yeah, minutes. Yeah, it's uh, $3, uh, a $3, uh, $3 liquor and $3 uh, domestics, I believe. There you go. Very nice, another reason to come bowl down here. That's, hey, that's <laughs> why we fill, all, we fill these squads up all, every time. Yeah, it doesn't matter about the scoring. Hey, we can have discounted drinks. Kevin's looking for a non-discounted spare, and he'll get go. it. That's a, big, that's a big spare. If he would have chopped that one, man, we would have been in, whew. All right, yeah. now, he, he had a chance to be up and really put this game away. He still has a nice size lead. However, the lead can be cut to under 20, depending on what Gerald does. Going back into the second half of game seven here, we're in the sixth frame. We are tied three, obviously, we are tied three games apiece. Whoever wins this one wins the Cruiserweight title. Kevin Phillips is leading at this moment. If he opens, he may no longer be leading. If he strikes, he will still guarantee to be leading. If he spares the defensive with a carry, as there's a strike. He's, he's gonna be glad this ain't gonna go best of nine because <laughs> that, that ball is creeping up high on him to where I don't know how much longer that hole's gonna be there. It, it, I, was, I was worried that he was not gonna get the, the three pin on that one, that it was gonna go through the nose. Well, Kevin's but, problem is that we have four frames left. And if he's continuing to lose it, if Gerald can start to string, and I mean real string, which means he's gotta figure out lane three, if he can do that, then this is gonna come down to a wire here. He didn't oh, like no. that shot though. Uh -oh. And is that a five pin? That looks like a five pin. No, no we're no, talking about five pins, and I you're talking about people look. missing them or making them. I can't tell. Ray's gonna check to see if that's a five pin. That looks like yes, a five pin a, to me. It is a five pin. It is a five pin. Hot damn. That would be a disaster. If Gerald Graham decides that now is the time that he wants to flag a five pin on Caffeine TV ooh, in a cruiserweight matchup in game uh, 70. Ooh. 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 He did not. He went, wow. I wasn't I wasn't thinking it was gonna go that well, Gordon. I thought it was gonna go in the drink there for a minute. Uh, it didn't look very good. And, it, and I'll tell you this right now, if he missed it, that probably is game set match. It could be game set match at this point. No. But it is less than 30 pins. Yep. He's got four frames to make it up. Unless Kevin starts seeing a lot of gapping, Gerald better start throwing strikes. Seven frame right now, deficit is 29 pins. Graham up in the seventh, he got a strike last time he was here, he's not gonna four get a strike pin. now, four pin. Gah. Now the good news for Kevin Phillips is that even if the hold's disappearing, since he's up by 30, spares will be good enough, assuming that Gerald doesn't string. The only thing that could put Kevin Phillips in any major trouble is if he starts to open. Obviously, if he throws strikes in the seventh and eighth, he can smell that cruiserweight title coming over to him. Yeah, the, the only thing that can hurt Kevin Phillips is Kevin Phillips. Exactly. That's well it. put, could not put that better. Yeah, I mean, that's it. There's, there's, it's, it's completely out of Gerald's hands, really, at this point. Um, if Kevin is solid between the ears, this is his. Well, th this is gonna be a huge shot here in the seventh frame because lane three, even though it's been creeping up, he's still maintained that hole. Yeah. So if he can strike here in the seventh frame, and I'm gonna hear, I may be a little bit quiet because if he gets a strike, you know Shane is gonna explode right now at this moment. And I wanna hear, Shane. If he throws a strike, I wanna be right here, mic you up because I think there's gonna be some emotion coming out of you if this next shot in the seventh frame is a strike. So I'm gonna shut up right now, and Mike's yours. That's good. Let's go! Woo! There you go. Good. Come on, baby! There you go, see? A as correctly uh, advertised. Yeah, very good, very good. We knew, we knew, it was, we knew that was coming. We, we knew it was coming. We knew it was coming. That is a huge, huge double for Kevin Phillips as we go into the eighth frame. Oh. And, and he can start to, uh, you know, Shane's obviously starting to feel it. Kevin Phillips may really be feeling it at this moment if he strikes in the eighth frame. Yeah. 
Yeah, cause he's, he's maxed at 277, and, and there's no way um, that's going to be, uh, that might be enough. Going for another three-bagger second Good. of this match was a strike, and it's buried. Buried that one, my goodness. Eighth frame, though, not nearly as important as that seventh frame. Yeah. Yeah, because now doing the numbers, the best that Gerald can do is a 227. And Kevin Phillips already at the 200 mark in the eighth frame. Yeah. Creeping up on 210. So Kevin Phillips right now does not need a mark. And that is assuming that Gerald throws strikes. Yeah. He's not, Gerald's not out of it yet. Well, he's not again. Yeah. The, the thing well, I'm he's like, almost out of it at this yeah. point. But he needs, he needs Kevin to make some major mistakes. And I mean, when I mean major, not just 9-0, but some really hideous looking mess. Yeah, the, the thing I've liked about both of these guys is they're striking, and but it's the way they're striking. Gerald is getting more sideways pin action, and it's it helped him out tremendously. When you watch Kevin strike, his pins are going back. Yeah. He's true 10 in the pit. They're not 10 in the walls, they're in the pit. Ah, knock mm. it over. Uh, I knocks it over, but the wrong way. Yeah, I was hoping it was gonna knock into that three. Yeah, Ray wanted some drama going into the 10th frame. He's not gonna get it. No, Damn as it. we As we already said, the best that Joe can do now went from 230 to 20. 207, assuming he gets a strike. And as we already mm. mentioned, Kevin's already over that. Yeah, because he's got 157 showing, he could gutter out and be one for devil. Yeah. Well, he can't gutter out. Gutter out puts him under 200. Well, I mean, what? See? But he does not need a mark. No. Well, if he, actually, if he if he threw the next four in the gutter, he don't, he'd end with 187. Yeah. And that actually might, 187 might actually be enough. That could be. Well, it's matches 187 egg. Yeah. That's right. It does. That's the right. there. That's not in the gutter. No, oh. no, 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 that was beautiful. That and old that man. will mathematically seal it, and the old man's going to be walking out of Myrtle Beach with some hardware. Phillips right now, that ball looks good, it is. Yeah, he, he didn't need it, but he, he got it, man. That was beautiful. Well, I was gonna say, he goes out the door, it's gonna be 277, uh, actually, yeah, it's gonna be 277, yeah. and that is how you close out game seven of a cruiserweight yeah. match. Yes, it shooting is. Shooting a 277. Yep. yep. Re regardless, he'll be somewhere in the 250s or 260s. Yep. Yeah, even if guys, he doesn't throw the strike now. Yep, these guys came in with 211 and 213 as their averages. And um, they, they put on a very good show for uh, for our crowd on Caffeine TV today. Uh, this I, is a great I, debut. I love, yeah. This is a great debut today for Caffeine yeah. TV. Yeah. You want, want some action, you got it. Yeah. Kevin Phillips, the old man, the guy that a number of people were talking about him being the underdog in this match. Yeah. He grabbed himself a very shiny milk bone. Yeah. <laughs> He's gonna, he'll close it out for a 277. I think he will also. That holding out no! for a 276. Ah, ah boo, boo, Ray, boo. Boo. That was fantastic, man. Good job. And we have the changing the guard. Kelvin Phillips Great. is your new Southeast Cruiserweight champion. Great. We'll get to the final score momentarily. Yeah. Love, love the gamesmanship there. It's, it's fantastic. Kevin Phillips. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I, I love it, man. Gamesmanship for the team is fantastic. The, uh, uh, the between these two guys, man, I'm sure that the, the connection that they, you know, got today with each other. You know, we might see them here in Unholy next year, bowling on the same team together. Like, you could. WCS Wait. does that to people, man. It, it brings people together. You're getting to bowl with, with people are outside your district. Um, that you're getting, you know, you're meeting people for the first time. You're gaining that experience. It becomes like a brotherhood, so to speak, and it, it's fantastic. UBA is great, WCS is great. 
And uh, as soon as Gerald finishes this hit, I'll have a word with Kevin here and and uh, congratulate him as well. I cannot tell you the number of people that have switched teams due to the WCS and the Unholy Alliance, but there's been a number, a number of teams. I don't see that happening today, but I do see, you're right, a camaraderie and a respect, and it wouldn't shock me either if these two bowlers because you know their game meshes well because they both shoot high scores. It would not shock me to see two, those two bowlers on a team at a Holy Alliance. No, absolutely. I mean, they're, they're, they're doing great. I mean, 16.45 for seven, over seven is ridiculous. Like, that, that's that's very good. That's you know. over 220. That's bordering on 240, not 240. Yeah. Actually, that's almost a 230 average, if my math is correct. Right. Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty good. That, that's solid. There's the walk, and there's the strike, and there's the finish. If he can throw it on lane four, he'd be great. However, there is a lane three, and while he couldn't handle it, Kevin Phillips did. At the end of game seven, Kevin Phillips, 276. Gerald Graham, 207. Kel Kevin Phillips wins four to three, and we have a new Southeast Cruiserweight champion, and here to interview the new champion, it's Ray Gillespie. Um, your second belt now for the team. That's pretty good. It, yeah. And two-time cruiserweight champion. Two-time cruiserweight champion. Yeah, it's been a it's been a while. It was what three, four years ago? Uh, somewhere in that neighborhood. Somewhere in that neighborhood. Yeah. With a different team. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So you're getting to bring it back to 187 Inc. I know that's good. You guys got that welterweight match. Y'all are destroying people in the welterweight series right now. I'm trying to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, so tell me about Gerald. How, how did you, the first time meeting him and stuff, right? First time meeting him. Great guy. Awesome match. That's probably one of the best matches we've had. I've I've had in a long time. Yeah. I mean, high scores, yeah. great bowling, great competitor. Yeah. So this guy right here, Shane. Uh, Shane is a, a huge fan of yours. Obviously, he's VP on the team and stuff. Yep. Uh, he's back there cheering for you. He did a, he did a great job. What is it like having that kind of support from the VP and stuff being here with you? Oh, it, I love it. I love it. He's one of the loudest ones we have too. But I'm tell you what, between him and the rest of my team, if they could be here, they would. But I've got several bowling and other things today. Uh, I'll be back here later to support the welterweight team uh, that's bowling today. So, yeah. So, Shane, what, what's the message for him, man? How, how proud of you are this guy? Man, I can't say enough about this guy. This guy is, um, I'm getting emotional just talk, thinking about it. I mean, this guy has so much mental, mental game. I mean, like I said, he can get down and then come back. I bowled with this guy since JSBA. And man, he's a bowler. He's a downright dog. He can he can throw down with the best of them. Yep. And that, that he did today. He he did extremely well. We heard you making a lot of noise. He stayed focused. He handled Gordon's questions because he made the mistake of being next to us over there. So right. so we got to keep talking to him between the thing. So it was really good. Thank you so much for being a part of this with him. Yes, Congratulations on being the, the cruiserweight champ once again, man. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, cool. thank you man. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you, man. Nice to meet you. Let's go, man. Let's go! Ah!